Hello, how's it going? <laughs> I see a, um, okay, cool. <laughs> I just saw an orange bar again on my YouTube and I was like, what the heck is that? Okay, so today I am speed running a pair of ginger jeans and I'm not doing this like to show off or anything like that. It's really that I'm just gonna sew it at a pretty like quick clip that if I were just sewing it by myself, maybe unless, you know, we need to stop and go over things, I'm totally fine with that. Um, and mainly I'm just doing that because I know you guys have watched me sew jeans a few times um, and you don't really, need in a, a tutorial we're just gonna hang out and sew together i hope you tell me what you're working on too so um the very beginning here i'm going to do a really quick tutorial because someone asked about adding to the rise and if they need to alter the rest of the pattern pieces that sew to those areas so i just thought i'd go over that really quickly kind of quick and dirty style so i made miniature versions of the um pattern pieces here so i have this is the back I, I just chopped them off. This is the back. This is the yoke. This is the front. Okay, this is a pet peeve, by the way. You see how this back is the right back and this is the right front? Those two don't sew together. <laughs> you know, I really wish pattern companies would do a whole right leg and a whole, le a whole, the whole right leg, right? So it would be like that, you know? Does that make sense? Like what I'm saying? My little pet peeve. Um, but that's how you would draft a pattern. You would do the entire, you know, one whole side of the person. You wouldn't just do like a right. This is a left back and a right front. That's what it is. A right, left back and right front. Anyway, rant over. <laughs> okay, so here are the pocket stays. Basically the pockets. They're called pocket stays because they go all the way to the center front and get stitched down with your zipper fly and... Uh, kind of create a tummy panel as well as making sure that your pockets always stay towards the front and secure which is a really nice feature and this is the pocket facing so this piece gets sewn here this piece gets sewn here and it all goes behind the front so you just like that okay so here's your right front here is your right back <laughs> we got it that way so if you're going to add to your rise Say you're going to add to the rise on the front and you're going to add a half inch, right? I'm going to try and leave these pattern pieces untouched, but I don't mind. I, it, it took me a little bit to, to throw them together, even though they're kind of quick and dirty. So if I added a half inch to the front here, to nothing at the side seam, actually, I need to, I need to taper it to the actual seam line. So not there. So we'll just raise it up, pretend like I did taper it like that to the seam line, okay? The reason being, you have to act as if you're working with the sewing lines, right? Okay, so now all of those pattern pieces underneath absolutely do need to be adjusted, unless if you raise them up here and they still work really well, you're fine. But the thing is, they most likely won't. So you do need to add to all the pieces. And so what I would do is um, tape extra paper around all your edges that you're going to add to all at once. And then you can kind of do it all at the same time. That way you're not like tracing each one onto the, the next one. Now, if you needed to go all the way to the back, like say you're adding a huge amount, like two inches, to the front rise, right? There's no way you can taper this to nothing right here. You know, that would be a little awkward. And so you would put your pattern piece back here. You're going to join it on the seam line. So half inch this way, half inch this way, right? So that's your seam line right here, okay? And then you would taper it, right, to that really drastic front rise increase. Now I know that you probably wouldn't increase your front rise like this, but funny enough, I actually did increase my back rise about two inches on my Mountain View pull-ons to nothing at the center front rise. So when I did that, oh, 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 I almost forgot. You need to do the yoke pattern piece on there. Whoops, 
Okay, so the yoke pattern piece is on there. Let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna line this up. <laughs> line my yoke, line up my back like that. All right, so now we're talking, okay? We're gonna add, I'm gonna try and gradually do this. This looks a little better, right? Sorry, this is so quick and dirty. I'm just doing this really quick and dirty. So here's my crazy front rise, a little more gradual like that. You would absolutely need to add to all these pieces, right? Because you would want, you need a seamless, smooth transition between your side seams and your um, waist. So just so you are clear, I know the gal who asked me was told that she doesn't need to change those pattern pieces. And at first thought, I thought, well, you don't, if you were adding a quarter of an inch, there's most likely if you're adding just a quarter of an inch, to this front pattern piece right here. Let's look at it. I used the actual pattern pieces and made miniatures so that we could see how they, they acted. Okay, so here's my front rise. Say we added a quarter of an inch, right, to the front rise. Now we need to see if all these pattern pieces would sew to that. And they, they most likely won't, you see that? This is where this pattern piece is. So if this is changing, like say we only changed the front rise and then we gradually went to here, you'd be missing this little part right here. That doesn't seem like much, but it adds up. And we're talking about these are half scale pattern pieces. So um, just remember to definitely check all the other pieces that your pattern sews to when you make a, an adjustment like that. All right, my tutorial over. How are you guys doing? Can you see me? Can you hear me okay? I did that so quickly that I didn't even really say hi. Oh my gosh, there's my chat. Hi Louise, hi Nancy, hi KB, hi Carol, hi Ida, hi Amelia Ann. <laughs> awesome, oh that was you, that's great. I'm so glad, so there you go. That is my impromptu. <laughs> rise lengthening um, I use removable tape as well like um, this tape right here when you put it on a paper it's really great so if you really wanted to you know check the side seam you know like that you can actually remove this and it won't hurt your pattern pieces just having one roll around <clears throat> really helps and um, I have my dispenser actually labeled that how do I open this but I wanted you to see that the spool is actually blue on the inside. So you don't actually need another dispenser handy, but um, so, cause if you don't have one and I actually reuse the pieces, I just put them on here and, and, and reuse it later. So hi, Rebecca. So that is one of my pattern drafting tools is removable tape. It works really great. I love it. And it takes me like three years to go through a roll. <laughs> so it's not a big investment. And it is really handy. Like if you wanna just tape pattern pieces together and, and especially tissue, it actually will remove off of tissue. It, um, you do need to be a little delicate on like brown tissue and stuff, really, really delicate. That's awesome, Nancy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll try and remember your name is Kelly, KB. <laughs> It's hard. I, I try and remember. Oh, yeah. Surgical tape is great. Yep, yeah, it, it is. It's just Scotch brand. It, so you know how like regular Scotch brand comes in a green box? This is in a blue box. It's pretty distinctive. So yeah, it's, um, it's just really handy. All right. This is my um, funny little, these are all my, my fly pieces. This is my fake zipper. I just sewed a piece of stiff stiffener because I want to practice sewing a zipper fly before I barrel right into my gingers. <laughs> because yeah, you know, that's what happens, right? You gotta, you gotta practice. Okay, so um, I even watched my tutorial a couple times today, the one I have for sewing a zipper fly. All right, so I'm gonna just sew one really quick. Oh, I forgot to serge this right here. You need to serge your right front and uh, your left front right here. Wait, your, this is your right front, I'm really sorry. I'm gonna slow down. I'm gonna ground myself here. 
<laughs> okay. I um, also, there is a dot on the pattern piece. It's like right about, I want to say about right there on the pattern piece. And I clip it right off the bat. I just clip right to it, right off the bat. Um, and that is because my serger isn't particularly, you know, flexible. Uh, it's not, it's not very um, agile like most sergers aren't. And so I find it a lot easier to serge these two spots with that part clipped already. You're going to clip it anyway. So that's why I clip it first. And then you would want this one surged too. So we'll pretend like we surged this, all right? That's my serger, all right? So now um, I sew this together, center front seam. I actually wasn't sure if I'd marked this, so I measured what the marking was. You need the, um, you need the notch marked at the top right there. You, you can try and sew without, but I need it. Right, right, Kelly? <laughs> yeah, it, it will be, Carol. Totally will be. Okay, so um, I put a basting stitch in from here to the point, and then I back tack right there. And I change my stitch length to a regular stitch length, whatever you like. I sew at the regular seam allowance. It's like that. Um, it's pretty clipped already. Let's see, I open this up. I top stitch my right front. Here's the seam. You can barely see it. Yeah, huh? that still felt kind of long. So the fly is open right here until I get to down here where the rise is, and then I'm going to push it to the right. I'm going to push it to my right, but towards the left front. Does that make sense? Okay, now uh, you could double needle this if you like. Now we're going to attach my lovely zipper. Okay, here's my zipper stop. That's really important. You wanna line up the zipper at the bottom and I'm lining up to the seam line, not the top stitching, but the seam line. And I'm just kinda of gonna line that little corner up right there. The, the, the thing is, it's really easy to want to put the zipper as low as possible. Like you're thinking, oh, I don't really want this gap there, but it won't be there. And you really need the clearance right here to do your, your curved fly top stitching on the outside. You don't want to worry about it. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to sew really close to the zipper teeth right here. And then I'm going to flip it and I'm going to top stitch along that edge. like that. I'm going to open it up, flop it over. This is my zipper, remember, flop it over, pick it up and just sew it to the other side. And I'm going to stay clear of my zipper tee. I'm mainly doing this for my benefit, you guys. I forgot the back stitch. There you go. Put in two. And then um, I'm going to put in my top stitch. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You, good to use the template here, the little curved one, you know, that you get with the pattern. Um, I can kind of feel my seam. It's not very thick because I didn't use the actual pattern pieces with all the um, interfacing and stuff. This is my top stitching. Did okay. And now I'm going to put on my fly shield. Let's see. How do I do that? Right? Like this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to actually put it down low like that. I want to cover up all that mess down there. I'm going to top stitch this down. My zipper's wanting to open. Okay. And now I'm going to take out my basting stitch. I think I'm I think I'm doing okay. Okay, there's my basting stitch. I would do it really nicely on my jeans and take out all the little threads. Um, let's pop our stitches just to open our zipper here. 
Okay, so zoop, I got it. Okay, um, and then I would bar tack, and I would probably keep the fly shield there so it stays kind of covering it up. And I'm just gonna bar tack it right about there. All right. Oops, I got my fly shield folded over there. All right, cool. Ready to go. <laughs> So first thing I'm going to do is my pockets on my fronts. Actually, I'm going to do my backs first. I'm going to do my backs first. So it's going to be a little bit of um, thread changing today. And um, I do have a zipper foot for when I sew my actual zipper fly and I'm not worried about hitting the teeth. This is the zipper foot on my machine. So it still has the needle in the middle. I can't move my needle left to right like you can on, a, on most home machines. So it just gives me this really narrow foot. That's how I do that. All right, so let's sew the back pockets. On the ginger jeans, the back pockets have a curve for the um, side seam. See that and it's straight for the back. I'm not going to do any top stitching on my pockets. What's easy Nancy? Are you talking about my little trial? Well that was easy just because I I knew even if I messed up it, it was going to go in the trash. <laughs> we'll see how my actual one goes right? <laughs> oh do I want I do do I want contrast stitching on my back pocket? I kind of don't. I'm going to attach my pockets with contrast stitching, but I'm not going to hem them that way. This denim is so stretchy. Little concerned about the sizing. Like even hemming my pocket, it's trying to torque. And I'm going to take that out because it torqued a little bit. We say no to torquing around here. Twerking and torquing. Yeah, well, I did watch that tutorial like two and a half times today, Nancy. <laughs> I had to remember because there's a couple spots I always um, want to skip by accident or do in a reverse order. And so I, I wanted to make sure, and I had to sit there and go, okay, this is what's next before I, well, I saw it because I wanted to make sure I actually remembered. Like watching it, you know, it always makes sense when you're watching someone else doing it. But when you go to do it yourself sometimes, it's a different story, right? It takes a lot longer because you're like, wait, what's next? What's next? I think this time I won't sew from the top side. I sewed from the underside on that side. And the reason I switched when I went to this one was because, can you see the little white holes that my denim is? You probably can't. Here, let me lighten it up. I actually made it um, darker for the pattern pieces because they were so white. I don't want to blow out your eyeballs though. Let's see. A little better? Not really, huh? Let's brighten it a little more. It's getting a little bright. Does that help a little bit? Well, so I was getting little white dots between my stitches and um, that's partly because of the spandex in there and um, you're seeing it. It's gonna relax and it's gonna be fine once it's washed a couple times. The directions, yeah, I think so. Um, I think, I you know, I looked at them a while ago, Nancy, and I haven't really looked at them since. Are you talking about the zipper fly? Because the, I sew the zipper fly exactly the way they do. So if you use my tutorial on their directions, you've, you've got it. I mean, you, you can't really get much more information than that. So if that's what you mean, yeah. I just used their directions to make my tutorial. There's a few different ways. Um, and the I will say I, I didn't like the order of the Jutland. It works and some people really like it that way because the way it's sewn is more how um, it's going to finish and then you just sew it down the way it's going to finish. It's, it's, I don't know how else to describe that. So it's rather than you're sewing it from the inside step by step, um, it's almost like you position everything and then stitch it down. And so that way didn't, I found it really confusing because I'm used to this. Um, and I, my results didn't, didn't come out as well on those either. So. I'll probably just stick to my own. I think I actually did a hybrid on that stream and I got a little confused. 
if you, maybe you guys remember. I'm just trimming this up. It's kind of thready. All right, I'm going to put my um, yoke on, and then I'm going to top stitch these things. Yeah, I, you can totally follow those directions, Nancy. In fact, um, it'll be better to do it with those directions if you are sewing the gingers because of the pocket stays. Because you guys all know every time I do my pocket stays on here, I always get into a spot of bother because I rush ahead, do the zipper fly, and then I forget that the pocket stays need to go in the center. And so I do mine a little differently where I trim off a lot of that excess because I don't want to fold the pocket stays over onto themselves along the fly. I don't really want to make the, um, the zipper there any thicker around my belly than I want, you know? <laughs> Unless someone like me tells you otherwise. All right, so you'll notice that the this is how the pattern looks, and that's because there's no dart. If there was a dart here, it would be a parallel line. But there's not. That's why you have a yoke seam. It is to get rid of the dart. <clears throat> Bet you didn't know that. Just teasing. <laughs> I still feel like my stitch length is really long. I still hate serging threads. I used to be so, not anti, but so not interested in doing French seams. And I'm becoming, ow, I just poked myself. Um, I, I'm becoming more of a convert. I'm really liking the way it finishes better than the serging does, you know? All right, let's see. Then we'll switch. I wonder what else I can sew before I switch thread color. I will say my, I'm not getting a ruffly, for as stretchy as this is, I'm not getting a ruffly seam right there, which is great. What else can I sew? Um, I can put the pockets on here. But what else could I sew preventatively before I, I could do my center front rise, but I don't really want to do that yet. No, because I need, that's where I'd get into trouble. Yeah, so I'll just switch the thread. Better safe than sorry, right? So are you guys hanging out sewing? What are you guys up to? I was really tempted to cut out three pairs and sew them <laughs> simultaneously. <laughs> I thought you guys would think I was crazy if I did that. I'll do it in my own time, I promise. <laughs> come on, come on. My knot is so long, see? I left my tail so long it was getting hung up on itself. I can't believe I got black marks on my sewing table there. I'm gonna get rid of those after the stream. I know it's not brand new, but it's still brand new to me, you know? <laughs> yeah, me too, Nancy. Um, I need a piece of fabric to do my first. Looks pretty good. Let's see how it is. So I'm using a jeans top stitching thread. It is quite a bit thicker than my bobbin thread. Ooh, you were, Louise? How did it go? Are you going to tailor all the things now? I thought it was really fun when we did the uh, those flat felled seams. Um, what do we do those on? Do we do all those on the mountain views? That was fun. I won't do it on here because I already surged all my seams. <laughs> They're not getting tired, Nancy. Oh, your Dominique skirt. Oh, that's what it's called. I haven't cut mine out yet, Kelly. I was thinking about it this week, but I keep forgetting to pre-wash the fabric. That's the thing. When I, when I get those boxes, I stack the box and I don't pull the fabric out to get the pre-washing. I was really good in the beginning. I would just wash the fabric right off the bat. But I keep forgetting. 
So if you have one of those um, twin needles made for home sewing machines, they're stellar at doing perfect double needle top stitch like this. It'll look a lot better than that. Like I know that looks really straight to you and it and it's pretty good, but the thing is with the double needle, it's more than that it's straight. It that each stitch is parallel across from e each one and it just really adds to that like, you know? Looks really good. All right, let's put these pockets on cuz I have the um top stitch thread on right now. And this is Yeah, okay, so that's the side seam. So the curved side of the pocket goes there. And I look for my pins, where my pin went into the fabric. And pin it down. I start upside down. I have too many things on my surface today. I don't think I'm gonna need my all, so I'm gonna set it aside. Nice. They're home machines though, right? I have, that's what I have, is I have a, Ber a home Bernina. All right, so let's see, I'm gonna turn that under. Um, well, actually I'm gonna use my awl for this. I'm gonna fold down this little corner right here of my pocket. Kind of something I'm doing more and more often to kind of make sure that, that those little threads don't peek out the top. Um, I'm going to start at the bottom of my, no, I'm not going to start at the bottom of him. Um, yeah, I'm going to do two rows, so I don't need to start at the bottom of my hem, but I'm going to start, where should I start? Maybe I'll start right side up. Okay. I better not run out of bobbin thread because I don't like starts and stops in my top stitching. <laughs> okay, this one's straight. I find if I kind of push that, it makes it a little straighter. There we go. And I like to turn this, what I'm coming to, if possible, so that I can just turn a corner and keep going. Now I'm gonna do it here. You gotta get your whole body into it. <laughs> I'm, this is really dark. I, can you guys see okay? Because it's dark for me. I didn't really want this really dark denim to be my next pair of jeans, but I just want another pair of jeans really bad. And all my uh, denim that I bought from Blackbird arrived yesterday, so that's exciting. Um, I think next week I'm going to do the um, Audrey jean jacket by Seamwork. I got this um, denim called popcorn denim, so it has a lot of texture to it. I thought it'd be kind of cute. Just turning in under that corner, trying to maintain the curve of this little pocket here. A great way to do that would be to put in a stay stitch or iron it. Because if you stay stitch that little fold line, it'll want to go under a little bit. You know what I mean? All right, now I'm going to turn the corner. One, two. Let's see, is that what I want? Yeah, I'm going to do two stitches across the top. Get rid of my pins now. Same. Oh, I fell off my point right there. I barely fell off there. Yeah, it's just too dark. Now I got my corners turned under really nice. I'm going to come back down this way. All right, just like that. That's a thread. I oh, thought that was a little hole right there. What do you think without the top stitching right there? I don't like the white showing, but I think that's gonna go away once it um, breaks in a little bit and gets washed, you know? Well, um, what do you mean for the proper classes? You took a proper class. 
They have Juki home machines too. I know my local place started carrying them, and I haven't I haven't actually seen what they are and um, what they do, but I'm, I'm really intrigued. Yeah, I think Nancy, it just like comes with like practice, you know, knowing what that fabric's gonna do. Um, I find pinning it is a constraint for me now for certain things. Certain things I absolutely need to pin. But something like a pocket, I kind of want some flexibility. But I get into trouble. Like that, the point on that, I barely caught the point on that pocket over there. I'm going to have to fix it. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that, Amelia Ann. That's good. Oh, they're industrial jukies. Cool. I feel like jukies have this um, odd... Uh, like status in the sewing world and I don't know why that that is they were really popular where I um last was working in the garment industry oh my gosh I almost did that wrong okay I'm gonna go across the top again no I'm gonna start this is I keep starting it up so they are a really great basic um single needle machine and factories do love them um and they're hard to find used but they're not impossible at all. I just, I bought the other two, not this one, but the other two. I bought them in Texas and they shipped them to me. These came on a pallet. Easy peasy. Getting you into the uh, studio. That was not easy peasy at all. Because <laughs> I was up a flight of steps at the time. Oh boy, I almost sewed that under there. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to see. I'm gonna take my time here at this point because it is dark. Okay, here we go. Like I want an extra light right now for me. All right, I'm turning into that corner like that. This one's straight, not curved. And places like where the hem is, that wants to go like this. I poke out, you know what I mean? Well, that's cool, Liz. That's really cool. I'm gonna try one. I'm really happy with um, my burning at home machine because I just use it for buttonholes, basically, you know, so. I don't really need to change. I've had it a long time. It doesn't feel like I've had it a long time. Is that about the right width? This seems a little bit too... One more stitch seems like too much. I have too many accessories right here and I just have my usual things. Why are they in the way? One stitch, thank you. See, look, I fell off right there too. I never fall off. It's just too dark for me, I think. I need to fix those. Off to a smashing start. I'd really like it if I could get crisper corners at the tops of my pockets than like that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm going to fix this really quick. That won't stand right there. See if I can line up my stitches really good. I'm just kind of pulling it so that the stitches pull to the back side. I'd rather the cut thread to be on the back side, not the front. All right, so let's line up my stitch. We'll call it the um, bar tack. Yeah. Not too happy with that, but you know. So either take it all, all off or um, live with a, ba a back stitch right there.
This is when um, I wish I could use my, like a little light right there, you know? But the warm light doesn't look, it'll, um, it competes with the uh, box lights, which are great, but they're, they're not focused. They're diffuse. There we go. I always remove my stitches on the back that I, that I, um, start seam ripped always. Otherwise they just linger, you know, I can really see this top stitch thread. It's like, it's like yarn. <laughs> All right. I want to pull my ends to the back though. Like that. So I just kind of give them a little tug. I still don't have this one. What, what's it doing? There we go. See like that. I'm just pulling that to the back. Rather than there being a cut thread on the front. You know what I mean? All right, let's see if I can line this one up better. My machine doesn't really like sewing with this thread. Do you guys have better luck with this um, heavier denim thread? De not denim, but the denim top stitch thread. <laughs> Sweden would be kind of expensive shipping. <laughs> that looks pretty good. All right, so there's my back. Um, I need to sew up the center seam, um, and then I need to top stitch it. So we're gonna bounce back and forth a little bit with the thread. And then we'll move to the fronts where all the fun is. I like sewing pockets. I actually like sewing the zipper fly too. It's funny, you know, those, some of those things you dread. Um, I, I find that then I just kind of start craving it because I just want to get it over with or I want to try out what I've learned or I'm just kind of excited about it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to put it, but um, it's like this one game I'm playing. It's really, really hard. And I don't know why I keep playing it. It's really hard, but I keep... I keep moving forward in the game and so I have success and it's like, I know I can do this, so why be nervous about it? Because I get nervous, you know? Okay, so what I did just now was I was lining up my top stitching and um, when I get closer, I'm gonna make sure that it's lined up, but right now I got it under, under the needle, it's secure. I'm gonna kind of make my pants be less curly and long and weird by just kind of nesting them together and then doing that. All right, so if I keep this relaxed right now and I fold it back, it's not too bad. You know, this is when that twin needle top stitching is awesome using the twin needle because then you know your, 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 your lines are perfectly parallel, perfect distance, because even if they're one thread width of wider on one side, it's obvious when you get to this point. Cause see, look, one one of mine is one thread width wider. You know? Yeah, exactly, exactly, Nancy. I kind of went crazy buying heavy top stitch thread once when I saw it. There is no way I will ever use all this top stitch thread I got. All right, so um, I'm not gonna top stitch this back seam quite yet because I'll just wait until I switch the thread over to it. I'm gonna get rid of all these threads right now. I'm gonna try not to clip my serging. Pull those th serging threads a little more snug, get rid of these. I just don't want it to be so messy in here, you know? If you're not pre-serging, you can make it look a lot tidier. But I pre-surged, so it does mean that each seam is independent. How'd I do? Yeah, I'm actually, the stitches are actually more parallel than I thought, but I'm like, one, I've just misaligned both of them to that one. So, 
Looks nice and clean though. I kind of like the dark denim and I like no stitching there. I like how clean that is. I'll put a rivet right here. It'll look good. Okay, let's get on to the fronts. We're gonna add the pockets first. I cut out two sets of pocket stays uh, because I'm gonna, just in case I get into a little bit of trouble trimming them like I usually do. So, all right, so let's, I'm gonna make sure that these are the wider ones. Yes, they are, okay. Now, one thing I did differently on this pair of gingers was I interfaced this piece. It is not called for in the instructions. It is just my own thing. I don't like the fact that most of your pants around the top are, are, are uh, sturdy, um, more than one layer. They have the yoke with the top stitching or the front with a few layers of pocket, you know. But right here, right against your hip is one layer. And I sometimes get these wrinkles like this in my pants and so I decided to try interfacing and see if that kind of cuts down on that you know it's just an experiment um, I, I want the right side of my pockets to show inside the pants not when not to my hands but to the pants themselves so I'm gonna sew this to the wrong side that's one <clears throat> This is the pocket facing. I'm not putting a coin pocket in. I don't like them. Hey, Sandy. Thanks, I know. This fabric, uh, I have it in like three different colorways. Um, and this one, I'm pretty sure my mom bought it. And she saw how much I loved it. Like she, um, oh my gosh. Um, she saw just how much I liked it from something else I was sewing a long time ago. And she gave me hers. So um, I've never used this colorway, but isn't it cute? It's called Catnap. It's by Lizzie House. <laughs> they never printed it again, unfortunately. All right, so this is um, right sides together, which means it's wrong side to right side. I don't want to confuse myself. There's indigo on my machine bed. Look at my hands are already turning blue. Yes, I did pre-wash these, you know? It's good to pre-wash a few times some of this. Yeah, I will, Ida. Yeah, because um, you'll definitely see me do this trick again if it works. And maybe it's just my quirk. But you know, like, I'm a little gushier on the front. I don't want that to be like a, a you know, spot. Okay, Carol, I'll see you later. I know, it really was, Sandy. It was really sweet of her. This is the same fabric I used on that making backpack. Remember that, guys? Uh, I'm actually going to trim this. This is far too big of a seam allowance for pocket opening. I don't like it when, um, I'm going to top stitch this right here, and I don't like it when my, on something like denim, the edge of the seam allowance goes past the top stitching, because then that'll create a ridge of fade parallel to my top stitching, if that makes sense. So... You know, I'm going to top stitch here, and then if, but if my seam allowance was right here, there would end up being a line where it would fade a little bit. Nobody wants extra in the front. That's right, Nancy. All right, so let me get this one. The whole, I don't know why, but every time I do things like this where I put the pockets a certain way, like right side to wrong side, I make a mistake almost every time and we when I have it right then I doubt it and then I put it in wrong you know I'm going forward confidently because you know it's not the end of the world if I did do it wrong especially this piece this piece doesn't show to anybody not to the pants not to the hands <laughs> it goes against the uh, underneath the pockets the other one
Okay, so those are ready to top stitch. And let's see what I'm going to do after this. Once I do that, do the top stitching, it will be the, the oh, I don't want to wipe my nose because my hands are blue. <laughs> A cat head shaved my head. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do any top stitching on the back either. They're just going to be nice and clean. They're, they're such dark denim, I thought I'd keep it kind of simple. You know, party in the front, or the inside. <laughs> um, okay, let me think about this. So if I sew my pockets and then do start my zipper. Um, I'm just trying to, to cut down the number of times I switch my thread, but you know, I don't think I can. I could do my po the bottom of my pockets right now. That's about it which isn't a big deal. I have to switch it back to the other thread, so I'm just gonna switch. It's just how it is. I'm kind of debating on keeping the machine behind me at the new studio um, without the binding attachment on it and putting a second thread color on it. But that would mean I would have to put cameras on that machine too. I'm just a simple girl. <laughs> He's trying to figure out how to share sewing. <laughs> I'm not a videographer. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay, so let's see here. Pants are always like sliding off. Okay, there's one. Here's the other. Okay, so I want to lose them. Oh, you know, I was going to hem my dress that's behind me. I finally put my buttonholes in my archer and I just need to sew the buttons on. I'm gonna do it by hand this time instead of with the machine. I'm finding the ones by hand just last longer and they don't have threads poking out. Doing it by machine is great in a pinch, but even I have to admit hand sewing wins in that case, putting the buttons on. All right, so um, I'm going to put my hand on the inside and I'm gonna pull on this as I'm sewing it. I'm also gonna try and make sure that I'm not torquing anything, I'm not distorting the curve, and uh, that I don't pull too much. But that's what my hand's doing under there. It's just pulling on that pocket facing or the pocket bag. I can do a much nicer job showing curves if I don't have to stop or slow down. Now I got that one, I'm just gonna go. Try not to stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Get a nice continuous curve, which was mediocre. <laughs> Hi Brooke, welcome back. Taking all the fancy sewing classes. I know you're really busy right now too. I am, I love this fabric. I have it in three colorways. The the like, I don't know, the pinkish purplish one. I have a greenish one and I have this one. The greenish one is the one I bought and then my mom gave me the, I'm pretty sure she gave me the purple in this one. I can't remember now. I still have a bit of each one too. It's one of my all time favorite fabrics, to be honest. There's just something about it I really like. I like the combination of it. And each colorway looks so different from the next. All right, so another note is like the reason I'm really trying to pull that line to the inside is here's the test. Can you see any of it when it's against the blue, you know? Like right here, it starts peeking out right there. Hi, Trinka. So that's why I do that because right now it looks great, right? There's nothing putting it to the test, but once it's against this pocket facing right here, that's when all your little boo-boos slip out. And right there I can see that one. Do you like, Brooke, that I took, um, you have some each color too, that's awesome. Do you like, Brooke, that I took uh, something from gaming for, for today's stream, doing the uh, speed run aspect? 
Yes, you can totally understitch as well. Yeah, you can totally understitch your pocket. I think that's a great idea. It would look really classy. All right, so this is this pocket bag. That one is that pocket bag. And um, I want my seam to be finished. And yes, I am sewing my cream pockets with navy blue thread. I just don't want to add a whole nother thread color to the mix. And I'm going to French seam it, so it's going to barely be visible. Only one of the stitches will be visible, and it is on the inside of my pants. I just don't worry about that kind of stuff. I mean, you already can see that, so... Maybe if you had a few machines set up and you were doing this professionally, I would recommend getting all your threads to um, match, but I don't worry about it. All right, so I'm going to do that, and then it's gonna go like that, and then it's gonna work. Okay, I had to walk myself through that. Do a little French seam here. Don't want the curve to get out of whack. And then close it. See, look, there's even mice there. So cute. They're like swatting, the little cats are swatting at butterflies. I admit, I'm a, a little bit more of a cat person than a dog person. But if you saw my personal Instagram, you'd think all I have is one pug. Because <laughs> right now, all I'm doing is posting pictures of our pug puppy. Okay. There we go. There's one. See if it all is behaving. A little bit of white. Can you guys see that? I don't know if you can see it. I can. Looks pretty good though. I'm going with it. All right. Walk myself through this again. It goes like this. So that means I have to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Why not, Margaret? That's fine. Why do you mean cheat? <laughs> if you're getting it done, it's not cheating. You know? <laughs> exactly, Nancy. And fish. Yes, there's fish. I know. It's such a cute little fabric. There's so much detail in it. The cats are just kind of a weird little shape and I don't know. It's cute. This kind of French seam, I don't really worry too much about trimming all the threads. I mean, like that, I should, you know, get rid of some of those, right? But it's the inside of my pocket. I don't judge myself too harshly. <laughs> yeah. You have two Boston Terriers. Oh, there's a lost Boston Terrier in my my uh, neighborhood right now. There's signs up, and I feel so bad for them. We live between a major park and a channel, which is a little more like a um a uh un groomed uh like offshoot of the river where they can let the overflow go so it it's a little more wild and um i'll i'll bet something happened in the channel to it we lost a cat there once too that or maybe it was stolen because i know those dogs are really desirable okay Let's see how I did on this one. I feel like this pocket's... Stop pulling. There we go. I 
Only three, Brooke? Hmm. All right, it's pretty good. Maybe a good test would be to see this on the um, cream and see if I can see a sliver of blue. See, I can see a sliver, sliver of blue on that whole one, so that's a little set up to be better. Let's see about this one. This is the one I have the problem spot. And there you go, that one problem spot doesn't have a sliver of blue. So, your floors are self-cleaning. <laughs> This fabric would make a cute archer, right? I don't have enough for that, and I ch challenge you to find some of this fabric, like a three-yard piece of it anywhere in the world. It's probably like languishing in some little adorable quilt shop somewhere that's not on the interweb. All right, uh, let's do the zipper fly now. Oh, I have my top stitch thread on, right? I forgot to top stitch the back. Dang it. Now I have to wait and remember. I'm going to do it in a second though. Okay, so um, I'm going to sew the side seam down with all these pocket stays so that it's not doing this. I'm already struggling with like the longness of the pant. They're like fighting me and stuff. <laughs> she used to have seven, Nancy. <laughs> When I, when I first visited her, I had no idea she had a dog. And as I walked up, I was like, <gasps> and I was swarmed by this little tiny army of four-legged beasts, not knowing at all what they were or anything. I was just like, <laughs> it was, it was very cute. Very cute. <laughs> The Chihuahua Army. All right, so I just top stitched that down. Now it's nice and stable. Um, I don't like that that's not lining up right there. So I'm going to see if I can kind of pull it up to line up and make sure that that doesn't create some wonkiness. But this pants driving me crazy, so I'm going to get it out of my way. All right, let's see here. So I want all these to line up nicely. You see, I don't like that right there. See that? That could be me cutting it, me sewing it, um, or um, it could have been when I adjusted my rise. So the thing is, like, I can't leave that. I have to trim it because this is now my seam line right here. It's a half inch from this point, you know? Unfortunate. I have not made the Alder shirt dress. I like that dress. I'm gonna trim these. I don't care about the pocket bags as much as I care about losing that front right there. So I'm just gonna go like this. Now if the other side's not the same, then it was sewing and cutting air. That's how I know. All right, I'm gonna top stitch this down right here. I'm gonna go most of the way, um, not all the way, because I'm, I'm gonna trim a lot of this off. I do not like that. I do not like that you turn it over on itself. It just makes this really thick. So I, try, I struggle with this every time. I like the idea of having the pocket stay. I, and I, I could just put it up to this fold line. My problem with that is if it's not secured, then it could do things like this inside there, you know, like <laughs> just be a little loose. So I, I'm actually kind of, this is kind of on my radar for this pair of gingers is to figure this out once and for all. And then I'm gonna make my pattern pieces to reflect what I want it to be. So when I cut these out, I have to think about this every single time. That looks really nice. Okay, you guys gotta shout at me to change my thread, or when I change my thread again, to um, top stitch my back center back seam, otherwise I'm gonna have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's just thread. I got a little worried. You probably weren't, I was. <laughs> All right, so I have the same little thing going on there. Let's see. 
So it's just my pattern pieces. Maybe when I uh, made those adjustments, like I was talking about at the beginning of the stream, I didn't quite get my gradual curve there nice enough, you know? My pattern pieces are getting so tired that when I did make that the last adjustments, I remember thinking, mm, it's time to kind of transfer these and clean them up a little bit. All right, so I just top stitched my side seam. Oh, see, maybe maybe this would this adjustment could work for you then, Atrinka, right? Mine are uneven too, but I don't think that would help me. <laughs> I don't think it would uh, be noticeable. All right, so I'm just gonna trim this like this, get rid of this little bit of extra pocket bag. These, these pockets need to be longer too. They're a little shallow, you know? All right, uh, let's do our zipper fly. So for the zipper fly, I know we just did this at the beginning of the stream, but um, you need interfacing on these two pieces here. You need your fly shield, um, and this time I pre-sewed this, just not even thinking, sorry guys. Um, I sewed the bottom at three, or half inch, flipped it, trimmed it, and then surged this shut, and that's how I got my fly shield. The instructions are really clear on how to do that. And um, I don't need that till the very end. And here is my zipper. So let's put that over there. So this is where I'm going to try. I may be getting fiddly because of my pocket stays. I really want to figure it out. I love the idea that they're secure under the fly, but it's a little risky to leave it so that it goes right under here. Like well, that's that would be my druthers. Oh, it could be a Trinka. Most people will have some form of that, you know? <laughs> Tiny army. So I would like this really to just go to like right here. And then when I do my double needle top stitch on the curve, it would encase it. That's fine on one side. It doesn't take care of the other side, you know? So I'm going to experiment with this. This is where I'm gonna get a little bit less speed running. All right, so let's do the, I'm just gonna sew this all together as if I am keeping it. At the seam, the, the little notch right here. You can see that little notch right there. Basting stitch. No back tack at the top. I already clipped my, uh, to the notch there, clipped my seam to the notch. Um, I already overlocked here, just like I did on my sample. I did those things on here. I have all the threads in the world from my serger, which is so annoying. I'm making sure my pockets are nice and flat because I've never actually stitched them into my fly before. So this is a new experience for me. I'm going to where this imaginary dot is on the um, pants where I clipped to. So thick. I mean, my machine's sewing it like butter, but Really thick. Back up my stitch to a normal length and then sew at a normal seam. I got a little off there. I'm gonna, because I know it's gonna get stitched to one side, top stitch to one side, I'm gonna kind of even out that seam allowance there. All right, so now I could just trim this off but it also means that I have this weird little amount here that would still fold itself back because this is how it goes, right? It goes like that. And I may just do that for this pair, you know. Hmm. This goes like this, and then the fly shield will go over that, like that. See, so this, <clears throat> I don't know why that's short right there. See, and this is another thing, like having this in here first, you guys, and then doing your serging, way nicer. 
I'm pre-surging. You don't have to. I wish that met that. I don't know why it doesn't. I didn't change that. I'm going to trim this one. I'm not going to trim the other. This is just my own personal thing, you guys. I'm doing an experiment. I, I don't like this. I don't think this is a good solution, honestly. But um, it's going to work this time. But see, now I've got a little ridge in there. I kind of knew that would happen, though. I said that. <laughs> All right, uh, let's change the thread to do the top stitch. And I'm going to top stitch my back as well. Right, right. This doesn't feel like I'm going too fast, does it? Am I talking too fast? <laughs> I hope not. It doesn't feel like I'm going too fast. If I wasn't talking at all, then it would, for me, feel like I could, I would be speeding up. Okay, so I'm um, going to top stitch this center front. I opened up my fly. I didn't stitch a little bit on scrap fabric first. See, and I can feel the ridge of the pocket stay. That's another thing I don't really like. I I'm just wondering, maybe the pocket stay just isn't for me, you know? Let's be fine. Okay, good. Thanks, guys. This could be clipped a little bit deeper. Let me just, I'm gonna go inside and clip to my notch a little bit better without cutting my jeans, right? Because <laughs> when you get to that spot where we switched back to our regular stitch length, you push the rise seam towards the left front. The left front as if you're wearing them always in patterns when they say left or right they mean as if you're wearing it there we go i'm trying i'm deciding now do i want double i like i kind of want them to be clean but i kind of want double down here so i think i'm going to do double just down here This is a little risky because it means I need to know where my curve of my uh, top stitching for my fly is going to be. Because then I can go like this across the top of that right there. Okay, back seam, back seam, back seam. You guys aren't shouting it. <laughs> Here we go, back seam. Um, and let's see, if I pushed this one here I'm gonna push this one this way so that when they are at the juncture of the rises the thicknesses are staggered that's my logic um, I, I'm not sure what's standard I imagine that's kind of standard you know yes always as if you're wearing it always if they're not talking in terms of that, that's not okay. <laughs> I would start not trusting that pattern. So I pushed my seam allowances this way to the right back. Whereas on the front, the stitching is on the left front, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I long for that double needle. It looks like my stitch length is a little different than my other uh, stitches. Shame on me. there you see that the little stitch got pushed the stitch going across here 
is like sagging, like the stitches coming through. Thanks a lot, machine. Okay, here we go. The, our backs are ready to attach to our fronts now. Going right along. All right, so uh, let me think about this. Now we have our zipper. Um, I'm trying to decide, do I need to switch my thread right now? And I think I'm going to. I'm just going to be safe and switch it. I find that the, the seam is better with the regular thread on top and bottom. Um, I don't trust the top stitching seams as much. There's a little bit of a tension issue going on there. And it, the seam looks a little messier. Like the stitching looks messier. My machine's doing the best it can. It does not like having two different uh, weight threads. It's very calibrated, you know? It's kind of picky that way. It's not picky about some things, but it is picky about that. That's just a quirk I do, you guys. You don't have to do that. But um, my thread, my machine will leave a lot of thread vomit, as I like to call it. <laughs> okay, so face down. It's a really long zipper. <laughs> uh, butt up the edge of the tape to the seam. Because I did the back, now I'm doubting which order to do this in. Oh, I need to switch my uh, foot to the presser, the uh, zipper foot. Sorry about that. I'm going to put my foot down so it doesn't come crashing down on me. Because if I don't sew for a little bit, it will just come down when it wants to. I still have not been able to get my uh, throat plate off because <laughs> I need to clean in there and I, I cannot, I'm starting to dent my screws. So I'm going to have someone else do it. Someone with the right tool. I have the, I have this cute little, um, <laughs> isn't it cute? <laughs> and so you can put your finger, it's like I got a divot and then you can do this. But I can't get enough traction on it. And it's because there's all the, the machine head there. You know, that's why you need the, that stubby little thing. And my uh, mechanic, when he came here the first time and I saw him do that, I was like, oh my gosh, that, that's what I need. He's like, here, you can have mine. And he just gave it to me. And I was like, yes. Okay, I'm going to stitch my zipper on here. Remember, you're lining up the tape to the bottom of the fly. Um, it's not the shield, the fly facing. This is the fly facing. Then we're gonna flip it like this and we're gonna edge stitch on the other side. Okay. Now I know I flipped my pants over this way. That's what I just sewed and I flop it over onto this side. That, uh, all this fly shield stuff is, I don't like it. <laughs> it's really thick. <laughs> Bye, Kelly. Have a great day. Have a nice lunch, too. Okay. Because of this thick, I mean, look at that. Look how thick that is. <sighs> See, but yeah. yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out a way around it, but it's just that's just the way it is. Is that a long thread there? I can't see it. No, no, it's not. It's not. I need to stop picking it. <laughs> All right, let's put in my two rows of stitching here. Sometimes I forget to put two rows. I haven't had any issues. It's just a um, security, you know, like 
All right, so now we're going to um, top stitch around the fly shield, um, the fly facing. It is so lumpy and bumpy in there. I don't like it. See, like this right here, and maybe if I hadn't done a French seam. Oh. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm not going to do the fly shield in there again. I'm a little bummed now. Cause see right here, I can feel, okay, my, I can feel, look, there's this and there's this. So one's going there, one's going down. See that? It's going that way, that way. That is going to eventually be a distress fade line right there at my crotch. So you can see why that kind of bugs me. And yeah, the only way I can do it is just get rid of this um, fly shield. Why isn't this one surged? It's so weird. I think just, I, I always surge that one. This is the first time I didn't do it because I followed the instructions. And um, I wish I would have. Oh well, so the fly shield's gonna go here. Yeah. All right, I'm second guessing. I'll stop, I'll stop second guessing. All right, let's put on my thread. They're going along fast, right? After um, I fly, I just have the side seams and the end seam and the waistband. We're done. Yeah, lost my thread. I pull my thread through like a serger. I do like threading uh, with this th really thick thread. It stays nice and stiff. All right, um, I should just leave that there. Okay, and I'm gonna get rid of my zipper foot so I get better top stitching. I don't get as nice of a top stitching when I use my zipper foot because there's just not as much like, purchase on the fabric, you know? I keep thinking about this piece of pie my mom posted on Instagram on pie day. And um, I don't usually eat at places like uh, the Cheesecake Factory. Brooke knows the story, but now I really want this piece of banana cream cheesecake that they have there. All because my mom posted a picture of pie the other day. I'm taking a couple days off at the beginning of the week. Maybe I'll just drive to Sacramento. It's like an hour and a half to get a piece of cheesecake. <laughs> Why not, right? <laughs> All right, did I, I know I just switched that, but I just wanna make sure I actually, yeah, I already had, okay. All right, so um, now I'm going to encase my fly shield. Yeah, see, why is that? I'm doubting everything today, all right. I can feel my curve. Remember, I wanna kinda of stop right there on top of my it's so thick, so thick, not a fan. You know, I am using quilting cotton as the pocket stay fabric. One way uh, you could combat this thickness is just using a pocket lining fabric, you know? But look, it looks kind of like thick there. All right, so let's see. I have room to do my, probably could have done in them a little bit further apart. I'm just gonna do one, just like that. I'm gonna add my, my oh no, I'm not gonna add that yet. I'm gonna put my fly shield on. All right, fly shield covers up all that, but um, that's not okay. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I'm gonna go run that through the serger best I can. Both sides should be surged. <laughs> Why not, Ida? <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome, Brooke. Okay. 
Okay, I should have just sewn these the way I always sew these. Because look, I can't get all the way there with my serger. And it, and it doesn't even look that great. Oh. Oh, I'm disappointed. Look how nice that is. Look how blue my hands are. <laughs> oh, man. This is, this is bumming me out. I can't, my presser foot on my serger is so wide, it can't get any further that way. It's too thick. Maybe I could do it this way. But I'm such a stickler for the right side of the serging. Alright, here we go. Lots of thread changing. That'd be fun, Brooke. Yeah, I was going to see if Cricket wanted to go and get a piece of cheesecake. Maybe my mom, too. You could meet us. That'd be fun. I don't think of Sacramento being that close to you. Why did you take my bobbin out? Because it's dusty in there. That's why. I think I sewed or uh, washed this fabric twice. I usually do with the denim. And um, I got to pull this through. And it's still fading so much that it's leaving it on my hands. All right. I'm gonna cover it up a little bit. Okay. Oh, sh I, I put that way too low. I lined it up at the top. You don't want to do that. That's just too low. <laughs> I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna raise that up. I'm distracting myself with the things. I'm, I'm like thinking in my head of things I could do to change, to make this better and better. Right? It's only an hour away. Yeah, that exactly, Amelia. Yeah, exactly. I've th I've thought the same exact thing. Cause I do love binding, and maybe I'll do that right now. Just on that one piece. But um, the instructions say not to surge that side, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna just not do that this time. I always do both, and um, I'm gonna just keep doing both. So that solves that issue. Um, but the uh, pocket stay thing, I'm not sure about that. I like the pocket stays a lot. So maybe I just need to get it over, go, get over it. And I want that same tip, Ida. I don't like the uh, serger mess either. Um, one thing that I learned to do is like when you're near your serger, you pull that one thread and it kind of cinches it all up, which helps, you know? But like, look at this. You see how this didn't get cinched, so it's actually creeping up onto the piece here. You know, I'm going to cinch that so it stops creeping more. The whole point of a serger is to finish your edges. But I don't find them to be the cleanest um, way to do it. They were invented for a way to mass produce clothing better and faster. Not better, faster, you know? They weren't invented to make uh, for home sewing. <laughs> I'm just getting rid of all these threads here because I'm already annoyed. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to raise that up like that. Get rid of I don't know why that thing is so long. You know, I do actually. It's because this is the um, long rise pair of gingers. And I did not know that there was more than one pair of gingers. I didn't know there was a long rise and a low rise one. And I bought the low rise one. And I don't want low rise anything in my life. So I, I keep adding to the rise of this. And that's how I ended up altering my gingers so much. So... All right, so there is my zipper. I'm going to um, I'm going to probably wait to bar tack this when I have the other thread on, color on there, but I'm gonna pin it so I don't forget. Right here, like that. 
And um, I'm gonna take out the basting stitch right now. It's nice to do from the back side on your um, <laughs> please tell me see this is gonna hang loose yeah I did those stays wrong again you guys they you can't you can't cut them where I did sorry hopefully you did not cut them yet <laughs> I'm gonna have to do something more creative I did this once on another pair I, you know what, I need to not let them bug me as much as they do because it's it's um, compromising my clothing right now. All right, let me get rid of that basting stitch. So there's my zipper. There, it's a little tangled mess there, there we go. Here's my jeans. Doo -doo -doo. There we go. I'm gonna trim all that off when I get to the waistband. But it means my stay is now kind of loose. So I'm going to, this is exactly what I did in my first pair. Yeah. That they, yeah, exactly. I train kind of. <laughs> That's funny, Amelia. I'm kind of short waisted, so I I am always trying to like put distance between my boobs and my waist. So all right, so I'm gonna have to fix this right here, and I think I'm going to do it by that. I'm gonna hand stitch it to this, and that's what I had to do on this first pair. So I'm actually gonna write myself a note right now so that I stop making this mistake. So the right front pocket stays need to go to seam. No, they need to go Need, they need to go to the, yeah, they need to go to the seam. No, cause that's the seam, to the, to the other seam. To the um, fly facing fold seam past center front. Left front pocket stays need to go sorry my handwriting is so bad right now <laughs> go to uh, fly facing all right finally yeah mid-rise and then low and high rise is that what it is Malin? I don't know what I have mine are pretty high though the first pair I made they're like they are like up to my rib cage and you can't shorten them once you've sewn them. You'd have to cut the top of your pockets off, which wouldn't be possible. All right, so let's uh, put our pants together. All in favor. All right. So I'm gonna do the inseam first, and the reason I'm gonna do the inseam first is so that I can top stitch the entire inseam while pants are open and flat. I have done it the backwards way where I do the out seam and then the inseam and um, I don't recommend it on anybody. It was no fun. I'm just walking my inseam to see. I wanted to make sure that I have a little bit to ease in there. That helps with the torquing, preventing torque. Twills want to torque. No, they're not Louise. That's the thing is I thought they were. All right, so I'm gonna sew these straight without easing. Um, there's usually a notch, but my notch is gone because of the surging. I'm gonna do it for a straight bit to about where the knee is. All right, and then um, I'm gonna walk the other side up and see where my easing is. 
You gotta be careful, there's a little bit of vertical stretch. Okay, so it's about the same. I wanna match my rise anyway. Remember, they're going to match by the seam, not the top stitching, because we canted the thickness. Yeah. It's not much easing, it's not hard. One thing to note, when you go to cut out your uh, jeans, um, always cut them on the grain line. Even if you have to cut each piece individually on one layer, because um, the best way to assure that you're cutting it on the grain line is to measure a parallel to the uh, selvage. So the length grain on the pattern piece needs to be parallel to the selvage. Don't do it to the fold of the fabric. Like if you have your fabric doubled and it's on the fold, don't do it to the fold. You can you, you can assure that, that the fold is on grain if you're using like a yarn dye, like a plaid or something or a stripe that where you can see it. But with denim, it's a twill. It's really hard to see the grain line, really hard. And um, twills want to torque around your leg. I can even show you my, my left leg on the, this pair of gingers I'm wearing, it, the inseam comes around just a tad and I can feel it. I don't really notice it, but I can feel it. <laughs> a low rise and a high rise in the same envelope with two different leg widths. And then there's Morgan Jim. My, okay, so then I just ended up cutting the high rise of mine. There's also a mid rise, yeah. That's what I thought. I think they added that later. Trying to keep my pants up on the table so it's not pulling on my needle. Love it when they match though, right? It's so nice. There we go. So now I'm gonna top stitch my inseam. Almost have jeans. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I think I forgot to um, cut and iron interfacing for my waistband. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, then I must have the, I don't have a PDF, I have a printed pattern. That's not one I had printed. All right. Um, let's see. I think the inseam gets top stitched onto the front. <laughs> you guys got the Google. So helpful. Yeah, because you don't want to ship patterns to your country, Homelin. <laughs> I just made my stitch length a uh, one click longer. Did I do that to the front? Yeah, I did. I'm just going under and making sure my um, seam allowance is pressed towards the front. This is the front, this is the back. That's all. So I get to my juncture, there's the seam, my top stitching. No one's gonna see down there. <laughs> Getting a lot of pants off that end of my table though here. I'm 
really trying not to think about those pocket stays. I do love a puzzle. Alright, it's a lot of pants. How many more times do I have to switch my thread? <laughs> you don't mind sticking them together, Malin? It's awesome. I do. I, I did not like that. I, I, was, I only was doing it on the Aster. Big deal. The Aster's tiny. I'm going to start from the top on both of my pants, but I'm going to walk it first to make sure that they're going to be the same. No problem. So um, if, you, if you guys change the length of your pants, make sure that you do it evenly all the way around because... Um, it's a really a bummer if you go and like your back is shorter than your front or one seam is shorter. Like one time um, recently, I don't know what it, what it was I was making, but the one leg of one pair of like one leg of one side, the fabric was short there and I didn't notice it when I cut out my pants and um, it was a problem. Like I, it, it actually really threw me for a loop because I, I needed all the length. <laughs> I ended up making them work but um, it wasn't ideal. Um, and that's not what I'm talking about, you, you know, accidentally doing if you change the length of your pants, but definitely check. It is kind of a pain to deal with. Sometimes, yeah, you can just cut it and make it all even, but sometimes you can't. Yeah, the Mullen, that's the bet that's the that's the only struggle with sewing pants is the fit, right? Pants are hard to fit. Yeah, me too, Atrinka. Is it a lot to stick together, Mullen? I'm thinking about that pattern. It just feels like I'm going into spring and I don't really I don't really want to make a blazer. I hate to say that, but I am going to make the Audrey jean jacket next week. Um, I've been saying I'm going to make it. I want to follow through on that. And I want it. And I, my denim just showed up. So I'll pre-wash it tonight. Or today, I mean. Or this weekend. <laughs> Not today. Not tonight. <laughs> bye, bye next week, I will. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to start at the top and go down. I just like to be consistent when I'm sewing those really long seams. Meaning, um, I didn't start from the bottom and go up on one side and then from the top and go down on the other, you know? So if you hadn't pre-surged all your seams like I did, this would all be look, look so much nicer when you're done because you could do that now or you could do it after you single needle the machine, there's a so single needle the seam together, then you could go back and surge it. Um, or, or zigzag, whatever your preferred method is. Bind, you could bind them. I would use really thin binding. You could do the, the flat felling on the inseam. Uh, I don't think you can really do that on the side seams. The pockets are going to be way too thick. It's possible. It's just a struggle. So you don't need to top stitch all the way down the side seam of the, um, Pants just through the pocket, the bottom of the pocket. I got jeans. There's my pocket stay already sleep, slipping out there, just like my first pair of gingers. Still making the same mistakes. <laughs> 
Oh, wait, what are you guys talking about? Texas Tuxedo, I just saw that. <laughs> yeah, me too, Ida. I'm go Who's having a Texas Tuxedo? <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I have the Sasha's. I need to look. Uh, this is when I fixed my little pocket stitching, so I'm just going to get rid of that right now. This is a good time to look at the inside of my pants because, let's face it, I probably will not look at the insides of these once I'm done ever again. Um, sometimes I wash my denim inside out so that if it fades, it fades onto itself. I taught my husband that trick for um, his shirts and things, and now he washes all of his clothes inside out. And this is my face when I have the laundry. I'm like... I'm not turning all the stuff right side out. <laughs> so sometimes I fold his clothes inside out. <laughs> it's kind of like, why did I teach him this? It's a t-shirt. Like, who cares? <laughs> but some of those t-shirts he really likes. He does care. Okay, so I'm going to leave these inside out while I do the top stitching. It'll just be a little easier. And then, um, then we're going to go on to our waistband. But I may have to stop and cut some interfacing. Sorry, guys. I was cutting all my interfacing out, and maybe I did do it. Um, I just don't remember ironing it if I did. Oh, <laughs> Texas Tuxedo. <laughs> oh, now you're making me rethink that. <laughs> I had a jean jacket in high school, and I loved that thing. I will admit it. I loved it. I decorated it. I was sewing then, so I had a lot of fun with it. I'm going to press the side seam to the back, and I'm going to go to the bottom of the pocket stays, the pocket bag. You notice I don't backstitch when it's um, going to be enclosed in a seam right there. It just has the danger of looking messy and poking out from under the seam. So you only have to do this for a short distance, but it does um, make your jeans look really nice and polished and keeps your seams behaving on the inside. So I recommend doing this top stitching. And I'm going to do a lot of back stitching right there as a fake uh, bar tack. A bar tack is a... <clears throat> A uh, zigzag stitch that is is a little bit narrow and very close together. Kind of like looks like one leg of a buttonhole stitch. We used to have a bar tack. I've worked a few places where we had bar tack machines. That thing sounds like a... It sounds dangerous. It's a very fast, noisy, powerful machine. <clears throat> but really fun to watch. It's a little awkward. There's the bottom. There we go. Look up. There we go. I'm gonna look at my thread underneath and see if I need to trim anything where that was at. I'm not a perfectionist, but I do like uh, my sewing to be clean on the inside. You'll, you'll notice that. This is one thing I really like. It really makes the difference for your sewing looking nice. What little piece of fabric looks like a chicken coop? <laughs> All right. Let's put the waistband on. All right, I'm going to cut my... Um, zipper uh, and the fly shield right here. It's going to go for it. So you got to be careful with the brass. Cut between the teeth. And make sure you do not move your slider up once you do this. I'm going to make sure that this is all aligned before I cut the fly shield. All 
I don't think I could get a brass zipper back on, so. I'm going to sew across the top now, and that's because I do not want to lose my uh, zipper. And I'm gonna be really careful. I'm gonna walk my needle between those teeth. I don't care that I'm using the top stitch thread. It actually might be really helpful to kind of remind myself of that. Um, that's not that secure. Like my zipper could still come off there. Okay, I'm gonna do it here too. Don't trust this. Just make sure you do something there because you'll be really sad at this point if you lose your slider. I actually did work somewhere replacing zippers. I'm gonna do it a few times here. So that's pretty that's pretty secure. My slider, you know, I just don't want one side to creep off and the other side not. I would just rage quit at that point. I'm just gonna tell you. <laughs> okay, so there it is, and I'm just not gonna touch that. In fact, a great way to prevent yourself from accidentally zipping it up is just put a pin across it across it. The zipper can't go past that. Just remember your pins there. Let's see? Let's see. Pretty sure. Oh yeah, I could get my. I still could get it past. Let's see. How could I? How could I make sure? I think I'll just do that. It'll help. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it, but you know what I mean. Alright, let me see if my waistband has interfacing. Let's see here. Doesn't look like it. Let me go get my interfacing. Sorry guys. Nothing like a speed run when you have to stop. <laughs> Hour 49 minutes in. Not bad. Oh, that's good, Ida. That was lucky. I have managed it, but I don't want to take a chance, you know? All right, so we just have the waistband and then the hems. Might hem them. I won't hem them probably on stream. Sorry, guys. I just want to make sure that they're the right length. I'm just waiting for my iron to, to warm up. Um, and um, so I cut my waistband just so you guys know I do not cut my waistband with the grain line that they denote I do it on the length grain and that's because there's less stretch on the length grain than there is on the cross grain of most of these stretch denims I am very particular I, I like denim on the inside and the outside because I want it to be thick I really like a thick waistband um, and I don't want any stretch. I want as less stretch as possible. A lot of people want more stretch. I want as less as possible. Like if I could do like a woven waistband with no stretch, I would with my stretch pants. I don't want them to bag out over time. And most of the stretch denims nowadays don't do that. So um, in order to do that, I um, actually did put a seam at the back and that's another way because there's a little bit of stretch in my denim. I put a seam at the center back 
so that I can cut down on the amount of stretch. Because if this is one long piece, it's gonna stretch more than if two short pieces, you know what I mean? So that's what I did there. And now I just need to remember which is the center back. So. I can tell by the notches, I just gotta find a notch. There we go. Okay. So, um, I'm going to switch my thread color. And I'm gonna iron my interfacing and then I'm going to put my center back seam in and then I will have the waistband ready to go. I'm not a fan of sewing waistbands. I don't know why. I think it's just past trauma. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you just have that one thing that used to plague you. I think it must have been waistbands because I tend to procrastinate them on the stream. <laughs> and every time it's gone fine. So I don't know why I'm, I'm worried. I'm also worried about welt pockets. And um, I was thinking about it this morning. I was like, why are you worried about that? That's actually, you know, now not, that's pretty attainable. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to have a problem with it. Um, I'm going to just pick two. Two, I said two. I am going to iron these. Hi, Wendy. You're, oh, that's awesome. What a great idea. There's water everywhere. I think my iron really is leaking. I've been suspicious. I just do that to get it started. Oh, there's a couple people in the stream that have jukies, Wendy. For are you looking for an industrial or are you looking for a home machine? I'm not familiar with the home machines uh, for Jukies, but I know people are really happy with them. I have an industrial. It's a little different. It's a lot different. <laughs> but it it's, uh, doesn't have many bells and whistles on it. I did a really bad job of that, but you know, I'm going quick. That's the side, that's the side. Side. center back seam here. The other way I can uh, prevent my waistband from stretching as much too is the fusible interfacing. You'll, you'll notice that a lot of pants do have a, a center back seam in the waistband. I really want to top stitch mine but I might not actually I am going to top stitch it I want it really flat 
I'm just going to top stitch it with matching thread though, so. And a belt loop's going to go right over the middle of that, so no one will even know that I pieced my waistband together. I'm telling you, I really don't like my waistband stretching. <laughs> so this will help a lot. All right, so the uh, one with the interfacing is the waistband that shows to the world on the outside of the pants. And I'm going to, um, oh, and I know also that my waistband doesn't fit my waist. My Juki model is an 8700, but it's industrial. And I wasn't sure what Wendy was looking for. And uh, there's a couple people here that do have home Jukies. Yeah, mine's an 8700. My one behind me is a 5550. I might I might say 5500 sometimes, but I mean to say 5550. They are basically the same. This is just a brand new version of that one from the 70s, I think it's from. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to sew across the end of my waistband and then I'm um, I'm actually just going to do this and sew my waistband together as I think about how I want to apply my waistband. I may be taking some of this out. I'm probably most likely going to have to shorten my waistband. I'm pretty sure it's longer than my waist. I like having that option though. So one thing I'm, I do kind of badly because I forget at this point, I'm so excited to finish my pants that I start getting a little bit punchy and I get a little bit slack and I forget to make sure that my waistband matches at the center front. So I'm trying to think about it right now. The interfacing is already helping my waistband not stretch because I'm having to kind of make sure that the bottom, the one without is fitting in. It's wanting to, to get a little bigger. It's not quite easing when they're the exact same piece cut and everything. This denim really likes to um, unravel, doesn't it? That is one nice thing about sewing with pre-surged edges is that it looks nice when you're sewing it, you know, but it is a nicer finish if you can do it at the end, I think. I'm just going to ignore that little extra. Like I said, I'm pretty sure my waistband's too big and I'm going to have to adjust. Um, I'm going to clip this corner. I'm going to trim my seam. I know I'm probably going to change this, but still. I may even unpick it and fold up along the edge. I'm just trying to remember how I like to do it. And I know, like, sometimes just, like, going through these motions and talking about it kind of starts reminding me the things that I want to think about when I'm putting on my waistband. The most important thing is that the waist seam matches from left to right at the front and also um, that the waistband is the same width left and right side. So you are, are you, you're, but you're wanting a machine for home, right? That's what you're looking for. I use an industrial for home sewing. They're almost the same price as a nice, as a nice home machine. Home machines are really expensive. My machine behind me was, um, I bought that exact same machine. I've bought it for $300. I've bought it for $800 and I've bought it for $1,200. I've bought three of those. And this one was, I think this one was $1,800 brand new. First brand new mach industrial machine I've ever owned in my life. The others have, have lasted me for years. All right, so I just trimmed all that. Sorry, you probably couldn't even see because I wasn't close enough to the camera. I just trimmed my edges there. All right, so I'm going to line this up. I'm going to see how, how it's fitting on my waistband. And um, I am going to sew this from the inside of the pants to the outside. Well, then um, I would buy a used machine. I, I like used machines. <laughs> that way you can figure out what you really like, you know. Where's my pins? I definitely want to pin my waistband. Oh, I want to do this from the inside, though. 
I'm going to see if I can attach this with the, the pants inside out because I'm just going to flip them the other way for when I do the last step anyway. So I'm going to line up this seam right here. So making sure that, you know, actually right now I'm going to make sure without zipping up my fly. Thousand being up I fly. I'm gonna make sure that my waistband matches my waist seam matches and it doesn't. See, look at that. That little bit right there is enough that it could make my uh waist seam off. So this would have been a good thing to do when I was kind of securing all that. Because like I said, this is where I start shanking it. That looks way better. Not all the threads. Who boy, the threads bug me, don't they? Okay, so that's a little more in line. So if I do the same seam allowance on this side and on, on this, you know, the right front and the left front, then my waistband seams will line up. You're welcome. Good luck finding a machine. I know it's a big decision. I haven't had to make that choice in a while. I just always get the exact same thing. <laughs> and um, I really like what I use, but it doesn't, I can't make buttonholes with this machine. So it does have limitations, but for a long time, like when I was in college, I used to buy these used Kenmore's. Um, they were avocado green most of the time or tan color. I would buy them for $25, $35 from people's garage sales. There were just like tons of them around. Um, sometimes they needed tune up. Sometimes they didn't. What am I doing here? And um, I would buy them every time I saw one. I would give them to a friend who was like, I want to learn how to sew. But that thing was such a workhorse. I loved it. And it was probably from the, I want to say from the 60s, maybe I don't know, someone probably knows. It was a Sears Kenmore, such a great machine. And then, um, okay. I need to focus for a second here. <laughs> but I had multiple machines when I was learning and going to school. I would have like, at one point, I think I had three home machines because not all, not one of them did all the things I needed it to do. So I had a few, you know, one would do heavy stuff, one did light stuff, and one did buttonholes. Like, you do what you can, right? If you don't have a lot of money to buy another machine. And uh, my roommates were really tolerant of me taking over the living room with all of my uh, sewing machines. <laughs> I had one roommate that was pretty upset by my pins though. She didn't like finding pins on the ground. It's kind of why I got good at trying not to use as many. I have to say, I'm really glad that I guessed which was the back of my waistband correctly because I, I wasn't gonna admit that I had some doubt. Those notches weren't speaking to me. I was like, huh, well there wouldn't be a notch there for the back, so I'm gonna hope that's the front. So when I sew this from the inside of the pant, the outside, the reason I do that is that I like to finish strong. I like to be able to finish on the outside of the pant because I know that I can um, control what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look its best there, right? But the drawback is I'm using the waistband without the interfacing and it has the less amount of stability compared to the other waistband. At the zipper area, I have quite a few. I mean, right here, this is two layers of denim plus four layers of quilting cotton. And here I have the zipper too. Here, it's even more. Like right there, I have the um, fly shield and all four of those. But it doesn't feel that, it doesn't feel too bad. What felt thick is the rise, the, the Juncture of the rise right here. So far that's felt the thickest. And even that wasn't too bad. My machine went over it fine. It's really when you're pushing it over, you know, it doesn't kind of want to do that. 
All right, so let's see where to leave off here. The weather got so nice here yesterday. Everyone's got spring fever. Okay, so see here, I have all this extra waistband. And um, I'll be honest, I'm gonna pull this a little bit because I know it wants to be relaxed a little bit. I noticed it on the other side. I'm not really pulling, I'm just making sure. Actually, that's not what I wanna do. I wanna make sure, I actually wanna ease it in a little bit. That's what it is. I kinda wanna ease it in a little bit. Don't, my only complaint about my current pair of ginger jeans is that I got my tack button. I centered my tack button on the waistband from top to bottom, I centered it. And I think it needs to be a quarter of an inch higher because it makes the top of my waistband do this, you know? Bugs me. All right, I'm gonna sew this in. From the inside. Try and do my seam allowance perfect at the center on each side. And I have to worry about my brass zipper right now. Okay. So when I get there, I'm going to walk my needle through. And I can feel when it goes between the teeth. You got to be really careful doing that. Another good technique is to remove some of the teeth right there. You don't need them to go all the way up there and enter your seam allowance. You can just remove some of the teeth with a pair of pliers. Um, I tried doing that once and I didn't find any just removed teeth about it. It was a little tricky and I didn't want to chew up my zipper tape because zipper tape um, isn't very stable. It's very finished if, as long as you don't nick any of the edges. Once you nick some edges though, that stuff unravels, unravels really badly. And um, I did not want that to happen. So I don't pull out the brass teeth anymore. I don't, haven't tried it again. It's best just to buy the right length zipper, <laughs> honestly. But because there's so much denim craze going on and so many kits being sold, they are not probably going to want to stock so many different lengths of zippers. So they're just stocking one. But you can go to Joanne Fabrics or a box store and probably get exactly the length you need. Then you're not removing any teeth at the top. Your stop stops right below. The, it, your zipper stopping on the, the metal stops is better than stopping with the fabric, the aid of the fabric. It's just nicer, you know? Otherwise it's going to definitely not chew up your fabric, but it definitely is going into it a little bit. I'm getting poked really bad right now. Ow. Tired of it. Okay. Soon I'll be able to take all this out though once my zipper is secure. A lot going on right here. My waistband's dipping down. There it is. I just got a little tuck. Oh, I thought I got a little tuck there, so that's why I stopped right away. I don't want to tuck. It happens when you get close to your seams. It will kind of, uh, you know, ripple around it. Create a tuck and want that. Definitely want this pocket stay to be in there as much as possible since we're going to deal with it later with my old favorite hand sewing. I think I took out the wrong pin. Right now. At least this time I can see, ouch, my um, zipper teeth. All right, so let's get rid of this pin right here. I, am I making this look hard? It's cause I'm worried about my zipper flying off the edge. I'm gonna walk my needle. 
I went above. I feel like that might make my um, zipper off a little bit. All right, let's get rid of these. Any more? Let's get rid of you. Any more pins? Any more pins? You are staying. We still want our bar tack. Was I just waiting for thread color? I could have done that a few times, huh? I'm just checking if my zipper, if my waistband is lined up properly. See? Perfect. First time ever. Let's hope it stays that way, right? Okay, so that is my waist seam is nice and straight. That's one thing you don't want a, a point like this. Uh, you don't want a point like this. You want it to be nice and straight. Right angles, people, right? Right angles at our side seams and armholes and our waistband there, right? Okay, so we have that right now. It's fine. Um, it could change. Now I just need to make my, sure my waistband also is the same width left and right. But um, I'm going to do that when I do my last stitch because uh, the inside isn't going to tell me as much as the outside does. All right, but I'm going to cut this one off here. I definitely want to make sure I get it straight up and down. I'm going to fold this up a little bit. I'm actually going to fold it just past the seam. I'm going to get as right angle as good as possible. My pants are pulling on it, so it's getting inaccurate. So I'm going to pull those up like that. So this is the end. I'm just cutting off this excess waistband. See that? It's my wa excess waistband. I'm going to reinforce my corner. I just like to do that because we cut so close to it usually. And, um... You know we're cutting off that back tack a little bit so I like to get really close I like a nice point I'm not the best at doing the points on waistbands and collars though I used to geek out on that stuff and I don't really anymore all right let's look at this side I'm gonna reinforce this corner now fighting me a little bit Probably don't need to do this but I'm gonna I don't want my waistband to get off in width. There we go. I'm going to get a little bit closer. Getting close. It does. It has more space to maneuver. Um, I can't remember if the pattern comes that way. It actually might. I feel like it's always been a little bit long. And I think I do find it helpful. There's no reason why it needs to fit perfectly unless you were a production sewer, you know? Give yourself some room to move, exactly. All right, so I'm just pulling my waistband now. The inside looks so nice. <laughs> but that's not where I need it to look nice. I need it to look nice on the outside. So I'm going to start at my center back here. And I start lining it up there. I could probably stop cut with cutting threads now, but you know, I'm like, why? <laughs> it looks like my seam. I don't know how I got this off. I thought that was perfect. I must have been lining up the top stitching, not the seam. It's nuts. Well, this is more online than that one is, so that's good. I do forget the. The belt loops, um, what is so wiggly? Don't look. <laughs> um, the belt loop, I like to uh, center the belt loops on the top stitching rather than the seam. I forgot about that. It's not a problem. I'm just reminding myself right now. I'm pulling apart, I'm pulling, 
what I'm doing right now, I'm pulling my waist like this because I really want to make sure there's no slack inside the waistband. You know what I mean? Because if there is, then you can get some get into problems with some torquing and some um, unevenness. Like that looks pretty uneven. I'm going to not pin all my thicknesses. It's not working anyway. I'll pin away from there. Like that. I don't need to pin right on the seam. So I'm spreading this apart like this, making my hands as blue as possible. Seeing that fold, I can't see very well. I'm trying to make sure you guys can kind of see the best you can without my head getting in the way. So, all right, so in all transparency right now, I'm almost done, I think. Yeah, all I have is the waistband. I could wear my jeans inside out. There was like there that there was like one of those days at my high school every year, inside out day. Um, okay, so for transparency's sake, I am sewing this to set myself up with the greatest chance of success for the outside of my pants looking really great. Now, most people don't do it this way. They sew the seam on the outside and then turn it to the inside. My problem with this is when you go to top stitch that shut. If you don't stitch it from the outside, um, your stitching on the outside might look weird. But if you do stitch it on the outside, you might miss the piece you're folded under on the inside. So the reason I do it this way is to cut that out. What will happen though is that my stitch on the edge of this waistband, it may end up down here. It may end up up here. But on the outside, it's going to look fantastic, and I know that's already caught in there, right? I don't have to worry about that. I mean, it looks really nice right now, right? <laughs> so that is my um, disclaimer. But I do everything like this. I do my um, collar stands like this. Um, so this collar stand was finished on the outside. I did my last stitch on the outside, you know. Um, I do all my cuffs this way. Uh, anything that is clean finished like a waistband or a cuff. I start from the inside and sew on the outside and they do this a lot in factories and in production. It's not cheating, it's just ensuring success, which I'm all about. Why make it hard on yourself, you know? And you know, when you're live sewing for people, you wanna look a little bit like you know what you're doing. Am I right? <laughs> But these are just the tips I use. These are just the kind of things I've learned over the years. And there's still a few things I need to figure out a way to do better. You know, like invisible zippers. I need to figure out invisible zippers. This is my year. Now that I have all this time to, to sew um, things for me, it's happening. You guys are going to witness it. I've sewn them in and they're fine. But I find that eventually they start failing. Yeah, they do, Nancy. I don't find it to be um, necessary if the inside look great. I just don't want to worry about the inside falling apart. <laughs> That's already bugging me right there. Give me your pie. Sorry, the light's not. Is that too dark, you guys? I came up in the sewing world reading Threads Magazine. I love Threads Magazine. And I feel like it's geared towards all kinds of sewists, but gives you the, the best information on how to sew things. Um, and um, they have really great articles with people. I don't really look at it anymore. I don't have a subscription to it anymore. But I find it a really great resource. And I don't find them to be like, it must be perfect and beautiful on the inside and out, but they give you the tools to make it that way, you know? And maybe on a good sewing day it happens, right? It is very satisfying, Nancy. Like, I, I really like how the um, unlined Howry jacket came the other day, came out the other day. I found, like, it is one of the better things I've sewn lately, and I, and I think it's due to the fact that it's all finished, you know? 
it's not like I sewed it better than other things. It's more that um, the what we did to sew it made it it more finished. I don't find it to be the best fitting garment. I don't like kimono sleeves. I've said it a billion times. I think it looks really sloppy on me and it makes my boobs look gigantic from the side. It's not something I'm trying to accentuate, but it is so it's so nicely finished and so lovely that um, I really enjoy wearing it. And that is a big difference, you know. I'm always going to have a problem with that armhole. That jacket would be fantastic. That pin's a goner. Um, if it had a real armhole. But I know then it wouldn't ha be the kimono type of um, thing people are looking for. All right. So now I'm trying to figure out, is that folded too low? This fold right here, I'll show you where it's at. It's a little low. Okay, so if this is where I stitched on this, look where it's gonna end up, right in the seam. That's fine. I thought it was gonna be a lot lower than that, so maybe that was a good exercise for me too. Okay, that looks really good. It always looks good when you pin it, right? <laughs> and then when you go to sew it, it's like, oh darn it. <laughs> Okay, I kind of want to keep pinning it the same way I've been doing on the other side from the from upside down so that I have the same effect. This is the slowest part of the speed run, but it's my last step, so I would like it to look really nice. And this is where I always shank it, you know? I always somehow get my waistband to not match side to side or the waist seam to be um, off left to right and I'm like gosh darn it how come I had to shank it there I mean shoot my shirts cover all that but still <laughs> so dark that's always so on here is dark stuff huh bet you guys can't wait for me to start doing spring fabrics so um, how many of you are getting the knit top from uh, Needle Sharp? I think I missed picking my fabric. Like it was never there for me. Absolutely, Nancy. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's like when you see a, a garment that has uh, lots of um, interest and detail on the front of it, but none on the back. And you'll even see that in high-end stuff as well. But um, that is a really classic way to cut costs, you know, put all the flash on the front. My friend calls that a, um, like when you see that in knitting, like all the details on the front. Um, and it's definitely a design that looks like it would carry over to the back, but it doesn't. Um, she calls that a coffin sweater. Like it only looks good when you're laying flat on your back. <laughs> Such a, she doesn't call that. It was like the sewing group or this knitting group she was in called it that. And she was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's okay. I'm gonna leave it. I want to make sure I cover the seam. I want to make sure I cover my seam. That's why I'm putting the fold a little bit below it. My hands are so blue. The fly is so short. So did you guys get to pick your fabric for your box or did you just let, did you just like the first one you didn't have to do it? I'm curious. Because mine just shows the skirt selection. Um, and so I was waiting for it and then I kind of forgot to check again and ask her. I emailed her today, but because I really don't want the first fabric in my group. It's the blue and white stripe. It's very cute. I do not want it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny, Nancy. Yep, they don't, they just skip that part. <laughs> Perfect example. All right. So this whole time I've been making sure that the seam is right on the top, that my fold is just past my waist seam. My personal preference. You got to pick it. I know, right, Brooke? It's so funny. 
Sunny's the one who told me that she was in this knitting group of women that had been knitting for a really long time. And she said, she goes, you know, I really like this group. They're kind of a tough nut to crack. This was years and years ago. Um, and uh, they are a little bit snobbish, you know. And, um, and so she kind of had to figure out her way with them, like figure out how to, you know, like navigate the social waters of that group. I don't like this little bend I'm getting right here, so I'm just checking that out right now, making sure that it's all turned right side out. It's probably my stellar straight line sewing. See, it looks fine on the inside, but not on the outside. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna like put this edge right on the edge rather than letting it wrap like that, which means I'm gonna have to adjust some of these pins. And that's, they, so they, when someone would, um, bring in a, like a finished sweater and be like, okay, well don't, you know, don't judge me, but it is a coffin sweater. That's what she said they would say. <laughs> and she was like, oh my gosh, I've never heard that term. But I've, I've thought of everything like that in terms of that. Okay, now I'm going to look at it right side up since I've been looking at it upside down. All right, so um, I'm going to switch to my gold thread. I do not like having to do this with the top stitch thread, but um, I definitely want it. Uh, I think on one pair of my jeans, maybe I didn't, I I top stitched the waistband in the navy blue and then I went back and did it in the colored thread. I wanted to see how it was. I don't even know which pair of jeans that was, so obviously it doesn't bug me. <laughs> oh my gosh. My machine's turning blue. Damn, excuse my language. If you if you knew how bad I cuss in real life, you guys. Um, all right, I'm gonna start at the center back right here. Brooke, can I get this blue off of my machine? Oh, these pins, man. Yow! Cough, yeah, I love that that corrected it to cough cotton. <laughs> That fold feels so low. I'm gonna see where this is. If I stitch right there, what happens? Yeah, see how low that is? I'm gonna raise it up a little bit. I think honestly, you could put the fold right up to the seam line and just the pressure of your presser foot is going to um, make it overlap your seam. You know what I mean? I can like with a regular cleaner. Cause like things like my knitting needles that it never goes away on those, but I have never really tried to clean my knitting needles either. Now I'm repinning it all because I really don't want to go too low. Just some of it. It's pretty thick. Yeah, I should have probably just pinned it right side up. Oh, my waistband is narrower than the pattern. I don't like wide waistbands. They remind me of little kids, like little boys clothes for some reason. <laughs> when I see those wide <laughs> waistbands, I don't know why on men, on a boy's pants. I doubt they are any wider, but it's like when you see adult proportioned things on kids. It's like they you put an adult waistband on, on boys' pants. That's what it looks like to me. We have these weird little things, don't we? Sorry, I'm repinning this. So thick, so dark, so blue. All right, but it's looking so good. I, I kind of wish you could just somehow finish it like this and not do the top stitch at all. I just love the, how clean this all looks. So you see I have a little slack there and that's because when my presser foot comes down here, it's gonna, it's going to stretch it out like that. So that's why I kind of allowed that to happen. 
All right, let's look at my waistband when it's zipped up. Because it looks off to me. Let's see. Yeah, so that's not that great. I don't, not a big fan of that. I'm gonna be better about putting my button placement, you know, like right there, right here, somewhere like that. I am gonna be picky about this part. I, I really do want it to look nice right there, even though I'm the only one that ever sees it. There we go. Like a cummerbund, right? Yeah, exactly, Brooke. All right, um, I'm gonna go for this. Actually, wait, 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 wait. I'm just gonna reposition a few of these pins too. <laughs> I already did most of the work when I pinned it the first time, so. Okay. It's not feeling like a speed run now. See, I told you I wasn't gonna just like race through. But you are all becoming experts. You don't need the um, drawn out instructions anymore, right? And I'm learning too. This is really great. All right, here we go. Doing it. I'm going to try. Ow! <laughs> I'm going to try and back tack on my uh, center seam. Actually, I'm not going to back tack there. I'm just going to start sewing. There's no need to back tack. It's a circle. I'm going to come right back to it. I just need a little more light. <laughs> I can't see and I keep getting poked. Do you want me to um, lower the camera? See, at least with the bobbin being blue, even if it's a little off in the inside, it's not gonna be as noticeable. Um, it would look nice to have an orange bobbin though on the waistband. But uh, my machine couldn't do a bobbin with this thread in it. I, I don't know a machine that could, honestly, except for machines that are set up for this. And those uh, machines usually you see on denim, like your stitches, that's a chain stitch you're seeing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Nancy. Start to finish pair of jeans. Two and a half hours, not bad. All right, getting to my I'm getting to my teeth so I'm just gonna be really careful here um, also I don't want my waistband to sag down there You can tell when your needle hits the teeth. It's instant. And you most likely need to change your needle afterward. Even though it's a really bad spot to do it. You know? Hi, Christy. I was just thinking about you. Yeah, I will, Nancy. I promise. Thank you. I, well, I know how to pick the fabric, but um, if you saw me sewing these this time, I really... Ooh. I really questioned uh, how I sewed them. I'm really trying to figure out how to do pocket stays on this. Oh man, I have to push this through this. This is when I get poked with pins. I don't like this part. 
I don't really like the way that came out either. This is never, the stitching when I do this is never as nice when I push it through the head like this. And I try and remind myself to not do it this way. It's going to be like that for part of it, but it would be, I don't know. This is be the better scene to do it on, I guess. Halfway. I'm like pushing my fabric to prevent the torquing. That's what I'm doing there. Yeah, exactly, Brooke. Yeah, I know. I've gotten a few people asking for cutting videos. We'll definitely do that. It'll be tricky, but we may even just have to do like a, a live on my phone or something because then I can move that wherever I want to. You don't have to sew the waist waistband in all one stitch like I'm doing. If you don't want to push it through your machine head like I just did. Um, but try and do it so you don't have to do your start to stops. Right at your center front waistband. With all these weird thicknesses right there, you have the greatest chance of having some issues with your um, back tacks and start stops when you are that close. Ooh, I can see the, ooh, I can see the bobbin thread. I think I can grab it of my basting stitch. I'm gonna grab it right now, see? Ooh, yeah. I love that when that happens. All right, um, ow, ow, ow. Try and keep this straight. It still wants to do some wonky business. Oh, man. I just sewed right over those brass teeth and didn't have an issue. I just got really lucky. It's really easy to forget on your left front because it's covered up, so don't forget that. So dangerous. You can turn, throw the timing off on your machine, break the needle, the needle can go flying. If you're lucky, you just have to change your needle and everything else is okay. I wish I would have stitched that before I started because it keeps poking me. Alrighty. Almost done. Ooh, I want to make one of those or at least a, um, you just never that way. They've been kind of quiet today, Kirsty. I don't know what they're doing. They're probably just watching TV and humoring me. <laughs> Doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, let's do this stitch right here. And then we'll look at my waistband, see? I think there's some issues. I'm just putting in my fake bar tack um, on my fly. <laughs> oh, I need to practice waistbands. No doubt about it. See, I got that wing again. It's the stretch denim, dang it. Ooh, it's so annoying. So annoying. Look at that. 
So the, be, okay, here it is. Oh, cool. Um, I called you out, all of you, huh? You're like, no, no, I'm not watching TV. <laughs> No, I did not sew over my finger, but I, this right here, this bugs me. Look how blue my hands are. I want a lemon meringue pie. Dang it. <laughs> oh my gosh. A weighted fleece bang. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, you've been sewing a lot lately, Brooke. Getting the bug. <laughs> All right, so the thing is, remember how I, I don't like how uh, the stretch is on the waistband going this way? Because I cut it because I cut it this way, it means the stretch is this way, and this is why I keep having this issue. It's stretching out the end of my waistband. So I just figured that out. That's why I keep getting this issue. So when I put on my tack bug, I'm gonna try and fix that probably. Um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it. But I'm definitely going to make sure that I put my tack button in a way that it doesn't sag, you know. But all in all, that looks pretty darn good. Let's see the inside. Because of the blue, you really don't see where my stitching is. That's my, you know, it's the nature of this thread that I get this. Not so bad there, huh? Because it's not as thick. All right. So what does this leave? Got no more pins, right? I have my hems to do. Um, and then I have my tack button and my um, rivets. Did you guys, you guys want some rivets? Yeah, that's what I do, Christy. Right? I know. You know, uh, Trinka, what happened to me is it ruined my one of my favorite purses because the purse was always sitting right here on my hip. I don't even wear a purse most of the time, but I wore this one because it had scissors all over it and one side of that bag is turned blue. So, thanks, yeah, those look pretty good. I like this, okay, I put interfacing on these and look at how nice that is, you know? Like I can already tell the difference. It's not, it's not all loose right here because see, what I hated was that all of this has extra fabric, this has the yoke seam, it has the pocket here, and then this little one layer piece right there was always like looking kind of like limp, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's awesome, Amelia Ann, that's great. Quilt blocks. Dinner time, dang, it's like 20 to two here. <laughs> I haven't had lunch, but I had a snack before. Okay, so uh, we could do rivets if you guys want. You guys want some rivets? Let's see here. I got my little anvil. Got my awl. Um, and I made a little pad. Um, let me go get my hammer. Sorry, forgot to get these things. Oh, nice, Christy, I'm so glad. Thigh snack lines are hard. I totally agree with you. Um, I just used a medium weight. I think it's called lightweight, but it's pretty hefty. I feel like it's pretty more like me medium weight, you know? All right, so let me remember. I think I put them where do they go? Do they, do they go? Does this one have them? <laughs> okay, there, there. Okay, I can put them wherever I want. So here and here, there, there. And then I think just there, right? Yeah. 
I'm trying to remember how to do this. I've only done it a few times. So let's see. These are for the tack button, right? The ones with the ridges. I have three tack buttons, but only three of the things with the ridges. Two of the things with the ridges. Um, two, four, six, eight, nine. Three, six, nine, ten. I have an extra one of these, so maybe. Hmm. Well. Okay, so let's see. Do I need this right now? I want my rivet to go about right there. So I put my I put my all right where I'm, I'm like pre-drilling a little hole, you know. <laughs> that sounds good though. Yeah, me too, Nancy. I'm with you. What I don't like is having to trim off the little tip, you know? So I'm just gonna stick it through and see how much pokes up. And so what I like to do is I compare now how much of that is sticking up above the uh, rivet because it'll just go straight through. I actually saw someone post the whole thing on like, I just put on rivets on my jeans and uh, you can check it out on my blog. But all of her rivets had ha had a hole around the tip and fabric showing through. And I was like, huh. Um, you could, Margaret. It actually does sit pretty good. Um, the If you're talking about that angle that it does, it's kind of the nature of the fact that it's a kimono style. You know? Um, I need a little cup to put these in. Here we go. This is Senor and my white one's Haku. Those are my kitties. I had her paint one for each cat. Okay. Get rid of that. So I just trimmed off a little bit of that. I'm doing this right, right? <laughs> I can't remember. Do I put this, um, do I do this on the anvil? Do I need the anvil for this? I can't remember. I wanna watch a tutorial while you guys aren't looking. <laughs> this is for my table, that's what that is. And <clears throat> this seems right. I can always take, I can always cut it out, you know? All right, my uh, my thing when doing, we're doing stuff like this is conf confident. Be confident and strike it. That's pretty good. Uh, because if you just do little taps, you may get a little bit wibbly wobbly like this. Oh, I know these little aren't they great. It's by a gal, her name on Instagram is, um, what the heck? Well, her, her, her website is Migration Dry Goods. Oh, a ling a ling is her Instagram, a ling a ling. I don't know how to spell it though. <laughs> Super cute. All right, let's do my next one. I'm just trying to get the spacing away from the seam there, but still be on my stitching. I poke from both sides because it's a lot of fabric right there and they get misaligned. Then I poke this guy through. Especially like this part, it gets a little misaligned from um, bottom to top. Okay, that went right in. So I'm just, it's hard. I can't be right on top of it because of the camera. So I'm just trying to, there we go. 
15. Okay, there we go. See, it was a little misaligned. I'm good. I'm just gonna be careful and check each one before I do it. <laughs> so I just trim off this little tip. It's really easy. The metal is really soft. Make sure you're wearing safety goggles. You see that thing fly? Oh, well, you know, this anvil, I didn't buy this thing. It came in my needle sharp box, and now any excuse to use it, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, Nancy. I was like, what is this? What are they thinking? I see that. Oh, I just did that on the wrong side, but look at that. That's actually, shoot, I'm doing it from the top side from now on. That turned out better. They, they actually look pretty good from one to one. I see that a lot. I see people post their tutorials on things and I'm like, oh, that's awesome. But then I see the thing I'm like, there's already really great information out there. And I just, you know, I want to see good information. I want people to get good information. I don't feel the need to duplicate all the information that's already out there. That's why this is more of a social thing. I just want to hang out with you guys and sew. And if I can, you know, figure something out with you guys, great. I don't feel like I need to do a whole tutorial on some things when it's already out there, you know, especially if the pattern company already did it and they did a great job of it. I don't need to reinvent that. Look at me getting cocky and just assuming I need to do that this time. <laughs> this is when I get into trouble. All right, I'm going to try it from the top again. It seemed to be okay. Like, you can't do tack buttons from the top. But you can do these. This is working pretty good. I told myself I was walking out of here with jeans today. It took me longer to sew the online Howery. It's because you have to triple sew it. <laughs> I'd much rather have jeans. <laughs> I still want a couple more pairs. Yeah, I saw another tutorial posted today and I was when I saw the sample sewing, I was like, you guys, I'm not a know-it-all, but I know it doesn't look right, you know? And then everybody's really excited about it and they're going to go check it out. And I just think, you know, all right. I do feel like I might be scuffing my rivet a little bit on that one, especially. So maybe it is better to do it upside down. What did he do with it, Amelia? What did he do with it? Isn't it cute? It was in my needle sharp box. I had no idea I was getting one. And then when it showed up, I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm really tempted to put on my um, tack button before my buttonhole while we're all sitting here. But I could, I could bring my machine over and do the buttonhole too. It's only one buttonhole, but you just can't see. You just can't see on my, that, you know. My dad um, had a anvil for blacksmithing. Did he blacksmith? Or was he a jeweler? Oh my gosh, okay, I, I think I need a better hole here. That's a really nice keepsake. I like that. I like anything that's a tool, you know. Yes, my polons are getting wear. I find, I, I do wear all my pants twice before I wash them. I don't know about you guys. I'm not gross. Like, I don't think that's gross. And um, this one I might have trimmed too much on, Nancy. Let's see. Uh, yeah, but I do wear them. I like them a lot. I actually like, they're a little long, but I like that they're not um, 
tapered and I made these less tapered because of the mountain views and I compared them. Your cast iron pan, that's a great idea. I think I saw that in a tutorial to do that. Okay, that worked. I thought my, my uh, post was too small, too short, but I trimmed too much. Was I thought that was I thought that was my pocket like pulling out from the side. I was like, "What is that?" <laughs> Hi, Charlotte. Yeah, I yeah I didn't know that jewelers use these for um, their craft, and because um, I thought this is kind of decadent. People buying anvils just to put on a few rivets on a pair of jeans occasionally. I I gotta tell you guys, I would have never bought the this. I had no idea it was in my box, but I'm pretty thrilled with it. It's cute. I only have the the thing underneath because I don't want to hurt my uh, machine table. Now that my machine table is blue, I lost the hole again. Please, where's the hole? This goes right through, my, my all goes right through, like it finds the hole immediately. I just gotta keep it at the same angle. This is a little thicker though. The post is a little thicker than my all. Oh, I lost it again. Right. Oh, that's smart, Wendy. Yeah, that makes sense. Germs, you know, like kids. I uh, don't come in contact with people here <laughs> at all. So my husband and daughter bring the germs to my house. Oh my gosh, I can't get this one in the I'm having trouble with the whole. I gotta, I gotta move it closer. Sorry, guys. It's really awkward doing it way over here. So just try and do it from here. Maybe the sewing fairy's trying to tell me something. Eek! I hate it when she's trying to tell me something. Okay, I see, I see it, I see it. Okay. You know why I bet that one was a little harder? Was that's where I'm, I'm folding the little triangle down on the top of my pocket hem. My sister's son, she has two kids, and her son got the flu, and it was not good. Her husband got a flu shot. He's in the Navy, and um, he didn't get sick. And the, she and her daughter didn't get sick, but poor Ian did. Oh, good. They put the, no, I'm not doing that, Nancy. <laughs> then you have to buy a freezer for your clothes. <laughs> so let me tell you, my regular freezer is not big enough. All right, that worked. Let's see, all my rivets. They really make your uh, pants look like done, don't they? I love that I put interfacing in that. I'm writing a note down. I'm trying to make, this is like, you know, I'm refining my gingers, so. This is an awkward angle to write this. <laughs> yeah, right, Charlotte? These are pretty flush. I'm a klutz, so I hate it when I um, grab things next to the ice cream. Exactly. There's better be room for the ice cream. That looks pretty good. So, let's see. Do I set my... You know, I'm not going to set my tack button. Mainly because it... Um, even though I know where I want it to be, uh, it's really impo important that I get it in the right spot as my... Um, buttonhole, you know? <laughs> what 
What weight of the interfaces did I use? Um, it was just, um, I'll go get the bolt. I'll show you. I can't remember. See that? Uh, it says fusible featherweight. It's not featherweight by by the feel of it. Yeah. Um, it's pretty like I wouldn't use that on really lightweight unless you're fine. If you're fine with it being like if you want a stiff finish, it's not stiff, but it's not super lightweight interfacing. If you know what I mean. I don't know why they call things featherweight. I feel like they're all called featherweight. I need to listen to that interfacing episode on the Love to Sew podcast. Have you seen that, Louise? The Love to Sew podcast has a whole inter uh, interfacing episode. I haven't listened to it, so I don't really know if um, what the information is like on it. So, yeah. Okay, so let's see. All I have left is the button, the buttonhole, and my hems. That's it. I'm going to hold them up to me. <laughs> so I think they're a little long. So otherwise I would just hem them. But they turned out really great. Not quite speed sewing. <laughs> but they turned out right. So thanks for humoring me on that. <laughs> Woohoo! really need to get a label. Oh, my, my uh, belt loops, you guys. I almost forgot my belt loops. <laughs> oh, you heard it, and what did you think about it? Did you like it? Okay, so let's see. Can I do this without... Why is it so narrow? Is it really good? Okay, good. These are so narrow. This is so narrow. I'm going to just do it on um, like this. <laughs> if it doesn't go well, then I'll just do it later. But um, I don't want to have to sew this and turn it right side out, you know. So um, I don't want to sew it and turn it right side out because it's so um, narrow and, and um, denim tends to unravel, you know and it's, it would be kind of thick. So I'm just gonna do it this way, hemming it over it. I'm already a little off though, I can tell. Eek. Okay, so don't forget that we have a, a group on Facebook so you guys can post pictures in there, it's private. Um, you can post pictures in there of what you're sewing. You can ask people questions, get their opinions. You love that podcast? Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's what I try to do, Louise. But, you know, a lot of time um, I will use the actual fabric. I don't actually use interfacing. I'm not a big fan of it. I'm not a big fan of fusible. It is really easy to use. And so I've been using it more and more here because it's what other people like to do. But personally, I will just use the, uh, like, like a poplin, a pre-washed poplin that I have here. It's like the extra end of a bolt. It's white. I don't have a black one though. It's not as, as heavy as quilting cotton. Uh, you won't see me in them right now just because uh, I don't wanna change on live camera. <laughs> I mean, I can if you guys want. I'll go throw them on if you want to wait. I just hate walking away from the camera. I feel like it's so unprofessional. <laughs> Streamers do it all the time, but, you, you know, I, I'm not a 24-year-old gamer. <laughs> I'm kind of behind on that podcast. I need to catch up. I usually listen to audiobooks when I sew and work. But lately, um, I'm filling orders, like <laughs> order after order. And so um, 
listening to something and paying attention has been real hard. So I've just been putting on like episodes of things I need to catch up on. All right. I, I don't, yeah, I don't know if this is going to work. This is the worst. <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> Let's see. I, okay, I'm going to attempt this, but I'm trying to keep it the same distance. So, oh, this is bad. This is bad. That was a bad call on my part. Oh, yeah, I can't use that. <laughs> I can't use these. <laughs> oh. Yes, a trinket. That's exactly what I use for my interfacing. I use the poplin because when I was buying 90 yards of like a print there, they they must, they're, maybe they're, um, Maybe their roll, or maybe it was when I was doing 120 yard rolls. Um, they they must come on 125 yard rolls, and so there'd be all this extra white pop, and I couldn't figure out why they would include it, but that must be why. You don't get a good look at the fit. Well, that's because it's live, like changing on cameras, you know, like walking away and changing on cameras, not, you know, and I usually post a picture on Instagram. Um, once they're done, sometimes they're not done for a little bit because I have to like put the buttons in buttonholes or do some finishing. And so um, in general, what I like to suggest is people look at the hashtag for seeing it on lots of different body types and I try and, and contribute mine there as well. And here is just more of a like, let's sew together and see what happens, you know? And, um, and I always try, almost all my garments are posted on Instagram, so. <laughs> it's just like I should have just sewn a seam, turned it, sewn it right sides together, pulled it through on the tube, and then sewed at the edges. But I cheated and I hemmed it, and then it put the stitch right down the middle, and so then I couldn't have two parallel stitches. It looked terrible. So, <laughs> so yeah, let me go get a scrap piece of fabric. I can actually cut it there or, you know, do it. Yes, this is the process, exactly. This is the process, so, I mean, if it were, you know, an edited video where I could like do the sew through, edit it down, make it all pretty, and then at the very end, you'd see a picture of the person wearing it, that would be great, right? But it's live. And I, I mean, if you guys really want, I'll go throw them on, but um, you know, it's kind of weird. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna sew my seam with um, the, Top stitch threads, I'm gonna cheat because I'm now feeling like this is taking too long. These are taking too long now. I just cut a two inch wide strip. I didn't want to find my pattern piece. <laughs> you do, Nancy, that's so funny. Most of the time I'll, I'll post a picture right away of the garment, maybe not on me. Right now, if you saw my office, you would be shocked that I can even sew in here. It's in such a shambles because I'm moving soon and um, I've been selling off all the materials lately and so it's kind of geared towards that. There's like empty shelves and bins everywhere, which is great. <laughs> so, um, 
you know, I've kind of been throwing things into that little photography area over there. So it's not as uh, photogenic as it could be. And I don't really have room to like stand. See, this is going to be so hard to turn right side out, you guys. I don't know. I may have to do the belt loop a little later. Let's see. How many do I need? I need two, four, five of these. I need them to be about yay big. Five. So that's two, two, four. Five, okay. I need to cut off about this much off the end. I'm trying to make it so I have to turn the least amount possible. I had to add my back tack back, otherwise it's going to come apart when I try to do that. <laughs> yeah, they didn't go as fast as uh, I thought they could, but um, yeah, still pretty quick. Not too bad. I pre-surged everything. And at the very beginning, I did a tutorial on how to lengthen the rise. Or if you if you lengthen the rise, if it will impact other pattern pieces. So um, I was showing that it does. And I also did a trial uh, zipper fly because I haven't sewn one in, in a couple months or a month or so. And uh, I just wanted to make sure I remembered the steps and then I got hung up on the pocket stays and started thinking about it. Yeah, I just did the width I wanted. I, I mean, I know that, um, I knew that that piece was too wide, but I didn't want to sit there and figure it out. <laughs> I just figure, oh, I'll just do the seam allowance. Okay, so now this will be a lot better. I can just edge stitch each edge and it'll be fine. I'll have my belt loops. Someone was saying that this was a, a it was a challenge on one of the like sewing shows and they only had like three and a half hours. So can you imagine? They probably had to design them too. Design them, do the. Did they have to design them, do the pattern, and cut them, and then sew them? That seems a little bit of a stretch. Cutting and sewing them, though, no problem. I don't know if they had to do a jeans and a zipper fly, but if they didn't, there's a lot of ways to get around that. A zipper fly doesn't take long, but if you didn't know how to do it and you're on that show, you know. Oh, really? I'm sorry, I usually tell you how to, how to use that tool. So yeah, you, you put it all the way through to the end and then you hook it on the end of your fabric. So just know that if your fabric's really delicate, it may end up tearing it a little bit or poking a big hole through it. Um, it's good to have a, a little extra, that way you can cut that bit off. All right, that looks way better. Still not quite, you know, as good as it could be. Um, Three and a quarter, three and a quarter. Okay, I'm just making sure what I set out I have. Um, and then once you get it hooked in there, you very gently kind of get it to go in on itself a little bit all the way around. And then once you have it kind of equally poking down inside of the tube, then gently pull and try not to push on your tool to unhook it. Like you don't want it to come unhooked. Um, and then once you get an end to poke through the other end, unhook your tool and pull with the end. And you can pull as hard as you want. I love that tool. It's like the second one I've had. It's lasted so long. I take that back actually. We had one fail here after a while. So it's probably the third one. In like 30 years though. Ooh, I nailed that. Perfect. Okay, there's my belt loops. So let's see, I, I usually like to put my belt loop in the waistband seam, I just totally spaced it. Bummer. Oh right, that's what it was. They were given a pattern. Oh, no problem. No problem. Okay, I'm gonna, I think the first one's about here. 
<laughs> you like how I'm just eyeballing it? <laughs> you can tell it's late in the stream. I'm like, all right, <laughs> I'm done. I'm going to line up the stitching with the waistband. I don't like how those dots show, just in case you're wondering. Now, um, I like to pull these little threads a lot. I like to get rid of as much as possible so that they don't keep doing that. You see that? That's the, that's the spandex, by the way. That's the spandex in there. That's the white. This way, um, you don't have this happening while, you know, once they've been worn and washed a few times. I feel like I just turned my nose blue by rubbing it. <laughs> Ooh, I got one stitch off. That's not okay right there. I was like one stitch off that whole one, wasn't I? All right, let's, tr let's fix that up a little bit. It's so dark I can't see. <laughs> Don't ruin, I won't ruin it. If I ruin a belt loop at this point, I just take it off, no problem. There's always backup plans, as far as I'm concerned, I, I think. I'm gonna put it just past my waist seam, my side seam here. I can't remember where the, the uh, notches are. <laughs> I'm totally winging it a little bit, sorry. I do kinda wanna do it this way though. I'm gonna do it like this. I'm going to put it right here. And then I'm going to fold it over. Get rid of this white thread. I feel like, you know, you're ready to wear jeans do that. Like the little threads start poking out from there. <laughs> I thought you could. Can you get it in Brit Box or something like that? I have Acorn, but I haven't checked to see if it's on Acorn. Does anyone have Acorn and no? Someone said they watch it like on YouTube or something. But I thought it was blocked. I made one mistake on these Charlotte that I have to go back and fix and it was the pocket stays because I keep getting frustrated by having them at all. I like them. I just don't like the way they're sewn. It's just a personal preference. Come on. I'm getting hung up right there. Oh, it's my side seam. My side seam's not letting me go back. All right, and I'm gonna pull out that white thread again. I don't mind if the blue frays as much because you just don't see it. I had to show your link. Oh, that's cool. Maestro de la costura. That's a good name. All right. Now, uh, remember, I am lining up my, let's pick out the one that looks the, oh my gosh, none of these look like they're gonna match. <laughs> this one, maybe, <laughs> they don't match. My top stitching is too wide. I don't use a double needle. <laughs> so uh, I, uh, this is the seam, but this is my top stitch. I'm gonna match my belt loop up to the top stitch, not the seam. I'm gonna use this one. Okay. 
Get rid of the white thread. All the finishing takes as long as sewing the jeans together, am I right? But this is the part that, you know, you can't wear them until you're all done. That's thick. You were asking about a trinka, uh, a trinka, you were asking about thickness? That one was thick. Bye, Carol. Bye, a trinka. Oh, bye, a trinka. <laughs> See ya. I thought Carol was leaving. I know, this is a long stream. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm gonna trim this a little bit. Because I keep trimming them. Best I can there. I'm just gonna match one to the next. I want it to fit my belt, you know? Because I do like to wear a belt sometimes. My husband always pulls his jeans up with his belt loops, you know? No, it's from the um, spandex inside the fabric. I get rid of it because otherwise it does that. It starts fraying and poking out from your belt loop. If you ever notice that on your jeans, your ready-wear jeans, that your belt loops look a little, like, tattery. It's that. I like getting rid of it. Um, let's see. Where do I want this? I want it. I want it, like, right here. It's just a little thing I do. You don't have to do it. I don't know how to say your name. Jarali? Oh, really, Carol? That's a bummer. I think that show is, if it came to the States, it would not be the same. You know? I haven't seen it, seen it but... Um, I feel like it would be different here. It wouldn't be as good. I loved Project One Way when it first came out. I think it's still on. I just don't watch it anymore. You know? Yeah, it, it really is, Carol. But a good, I've seen good home sewing machines have no problem. Some of them better. Just gotta use the right needle. This is a size um, 18 needle. When you're doing denim, you, you pretty much want a 16 or 18 needle. I'm going to trim that and then I'm going to pull all those threads again. See, they're just going to do it anyway. That's why I get rid of them. Once you've washed your pants a few times, and let's face it, like a lot of us aren't gonna go back and do a lot of maintenance on our clothes once we've sewn them. I do, but I don't want to, <laughs> you know? I will wait until it really annoys me and then I'll go back and do it. I gotta get rid of this thread. I'm about to lose it. I need to get it under there quick. Secure it down. Okay, one more. Who knew belt loops took this long? <laughs> you know? Okay, let's see. I want to compare where this one's at to... I can line up my rivets. And then I can see my back stitch right there. Helps. Belt loops are one of those things you can't think too hard about. The, you, you're, if you have OCD, they may it may bug you because they're not centered on the garment because the button fly the the fly isn't centered. It's off to the you know off to your left. Yeah, yeah. Top stitching needles tend to be a little bit sharper. Like I think with home sewing, using sharp needles like the ones that are called sharps, those are those are better. Is my camera moving? Let me see. Oh, okay. Just making sure. I feel like my camera has moved. It's been drifting a little lately. Have you guys noticed that? It's 
got a little mind of its own. Okay, so I'm going to put these this belt loop on. And then uh, just for you guys, I will run and throw them on really quick. And then um, we'll call it a stream. Because that gets me out of posting a picture right away, right? <laughs> of me wearing them. <laughs> Make sure my pocket fabric is... I'm going to trim it after I sew it. Better I should trim it before. That was a little hard, you know. This is my third pair of gingers, Charlotte. That's why I'm like, eh, you don't need to see me in them again. I'm wearing a pair right now. So I don't have a button. It's my back. I'm bad. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, you guys entertain yourselves. Tell new people where it get went. Ready? Let me see. I have to be over here. I gotta move the chair. <laughs> Not bad. I can make the me a little too big. What do you think? <laughs> now at least I know how long they are and I can hem them before I go. <laughs> Look at all you Brits. All right, guys. Well, that's me. That's three and a half hours, hardly a speed run. But in one sitting, we have our jeans. All I need is hems and the um, buttonhole and the button and that's it and I'm gonna stay and do that so I walk away with jeans today that was my plan so <laughs> thank you so thanks for coming and thanks for um, hanging out with me this whole time and um, on Thursday I'm going to start the jean jacket called the Audrey by Seamwork magazine thanks guys guys <laughs> Yeah, they're so, these are so comfortable. And I've worked a lot on my fit. These are not straight out the gate ginger jeans from the um, envelope. I have adjusted my pattern several times. So you just got, like my first pair, they don't fit that great, but they're still actually really comfortable and I still wear them all the time. I still wear them every week. They're just like my, I want to feel kind of comfortable today jeans, but they don't look bad. Like, you know, if I have a shirt on, they're just not so tight at the top. Bye, Louise. So thanks for coming, and um, I will see you guys. Thanks, Brooke. I will see you guys on um, Thursday, 10 a.m. Pacific, Audrey, Seamwork Magazine. I'm Sarah Mee. Check me out on Instagram. Check out the group on Facebook. Just ask to join it. If you can find it, it's called So So Live Sewists. 
Um, you're welcome, you guys. My pleasure. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys around. Take care. Have a great weekend. And I hope you guys get a ton of sewing done. I'm done sewing for the weekend finally. So <laughs> take care, guys.